Adam, this is not a matter of life and death. Patience, patience. After 30 years on the bench, deliberation becomes a way of life. I hear it tell that once it took the judge two weeks of deliberation to decide as to whether or not to deny or sustain an objection. That's a lie. It took less than 10 days. By the time he'd made his decision, I'd forgotten what it was I objected about. <laughs> well, in that case, I think I'd better sit down. Peace. That's an apocryphal story. However, I always do try to see every side of a thing before rendering a decision. <laughs> Jared, would you uh, lend me a dollar, please? Thank you, gentlemen, for a most stimulating and rewarding evening. Thank you, Victoria, for being so lovely and such a good cook. Flattery, Adam, will only get you another invitation for dinner next week. Any evening these boys feel like another game of fool, who would have thought that beneath those judicial robes lies the heart of a thief? Ah, uh, Jared, if this ever gets out, my judicial reputation is ruined. <laughs> Mr. Barclay? Please get the doctor. Well, let's get him over the couch. Thank you. Very kind. Mr. Barclay? That's right. Mr. Barclay? My name is Polino Arieta. I have just escaped from the Pinewood Jail, where I was held as a murderer. I wish you to be my lawyer. Well, I wish you'd asked me that before you escaped. I didn't think I had a chance in the court, so I ran away. But I am innocent. Now I wish to stand and fight them. I remember how you saved my, my cousin Arturo. I think you must be the man to save me also. Do you accept? I will see about that as soon as we take care of this wound. One more thing. I am a Basque. In Pinewood, they call some of us Basques murderers and traitors and foreigners. I am an anarchist. How is he? Well, he's lost a lot of blood, but he's a strong boy. Doctor said he'd be fine after a couple of days rest. Fine, eh? For hanging? He should have kept running until he was out of the state or across the border. Why, Your Honor, that doesn't sound very much like you. Well, chalk it up to its being way past an old man's bedtime. Anyway, we're not just judge and lawyer here. We're two old and very good friends. And as a friend, Jared, I hope you haven't decided to represent him. Why not? You're going to be on the bench, aren't you? That's besides the point. I'm a county judge, Jared. I'll have to preside unless I get lucky and fall deathly ill, get run over by a team of wild horses. <laughs> Jared, when you defended that Basque two years ago, it was an unpopular cause. And he was only accused of petty theft. Well, a lot's happened since then. 
I don't have to tell you those people up around Pine would have been scared witless by this anarchist philosophy. Oh, that's a lot of nonsense, Adam. Well, the entire Basque community is only represented by a small minority, and probably only a few of them are anarchists. There's nothing rational about fear. And there's no atmosphere less conducive to holding a fair trial. Win or lose, you're going to make more enemies than any man needs in a whole lifetime. And get paid off for your labor in a bottle of Basque wine. Ah. A dozen bottles of good bass wine and a sheepskin coat. Now, that's what that bass paid me two years ago to defend him. And besides, Adam, the boy might be innocent. He's an admitted anarchist. He believes in violent overthrow of government. Object. Therefore, he believes in personal violence, since governments are composed of people. Your Honor, I object. He... <laughs> Sustained. Cigar. No, thank you. After all, we're not trying the boy for a philosophy, are we, but for an overt action. Ideas can't kill people, only people can. But I'd better stop that. We'll probably be arguing this in court, won't we? Yes, we will. And to think it was my intention to try to talk you out of taking the case. Well, next time I'll know better. I'll keep my big fat mouth shut, take my three dollars and go straight home. Well, if it's any consolation to you, Adam, I decided to take the case before I came downstairs. Now, where did Victoria put my hat? And do you know why? Hmm? Because I know that no matter how unpopular the case, I can present my client before a judge that is fair and just, no matter what the atmosphere. Who do you want? You just can't come barging in here. You have no right. Oh, I got the right. Now, Vic, you take a look upstairs. You better hold off. You can't go up those steps. Shut up. You on the stairs. I believe you heard the gentleman. OK, Vic, hold it a second. My name's Walt Baker. I'm Sheriff of Pinewood Way. I believe we met once before, Mr. Barclay. What are you waiting for? Hold it right there. You do have a warrant, Sheriff. Now look, Mr. Barclay, I'm chasing an escaped murderer, and I have every reason to believe that he's holed up right here. Well, he's upstairs in one of the bedrooms, Sheriff. Why didn't you just ask? Well, I just thought that I knew we hit him. There was some blood. I'll take him off your hands now, Mr. Barclay. He's in no condition to be moved. He busted out of my jail, and I'm taking him back with me. One way or another, he goes back with me tonight. And if he dies along the way, chalk it up, it'll save the state expenses for the trial. Now step aside, Mr. Barclay. Yes, Sheriff? You take him. We're ill-equipped to stop you. But mark this. If he does die en route back to your jail, or even if he makes it safely and then some accident befalls him. You, Sheriff, you and your deputy will stand trial in my court for murder. Well, Judge, I didn't know that you were here. Okay, Vic, the judge is here. You will take full responsibility for the prisoner. Is that right, Your Honor? That's right. Mr. Barkley. <sighs> Many thanks, Adam. Yes, Jared. It's beginning to shape up, even now, as quite a trial. Well, Nick, I thought we'd already said goodbye. Ethan and I have uh, been doing some thinking. Yeah, I know what you've been thinking about. He's already told me. Now, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer of the company. Now, you're going to run into just a little bit more in trouble up there in Pinewood. Oh, I don't think so. I think the judge straightened that out pretty well with the sheriff. The sheriff is one man. From what I understand, the feelings are running pretty high against the Basques in that town. Uh, I'll bet you turn out to be nothing more than a routine lawyer's job. Now, there's nothing routine lawyer's job about this. Now, look, Nick. It's been a long time since you've asked me to mend a fence or chase a stray, right? This is a little bit different. Just give us your best wishes. We can use all of those we can get, right, Polino? No, I'm not worried. I'm innocent. Besides, I have the best lawyer in the world. So long, Nick. Get up there. Basque. 
This man is in my custody. I'm delivering him to your sheriff. Oh, we'll take care of that for you, mister. Take him. Let him go, boys. I said, let him go. What's going on? Just in the nick of time, huh, Sheriff? I don't think so, Counselor. Good folks were just making sure that the prisoner was headed in the right direction. I'll take him off your hands now, Barkley. All right, break it up. Go on about your business. You staying around a piece, mister? That's right. Good. It'll give us a chance to get better acquainted. Maybe find out what kind of man would defend a Go man. on now, Russ. Move it along. You got to understand, Russ, Mr. Barkley. He didn't have any more against them Basque anarchists than the rest of us did. Till your boy there killed his brother, Bill Miller. I never killed any Miller. How could I? I spent the whole day with my friend Julio up in the hills. He'll swear to that. I'll prove it to you. Well, you know, we don't have to prove it to him. We'll prove it in court. Now, I'm going to have to leave for a little while. You'll be safe here. I think the sheriff will see to that. Oh, Mr. Buckley. When you see my friend Julio, have him bring my dog. He'll be lost without me. Like that, one way or another, he's bound to get hurt. You'd asked me that before you tried to kill me. I thought you were from the town. We Basques have had much trouble here. They have threatened to run us off our land, even to kill us. Well, I'm Jared Barkley, Paulino Arietta's lawyer. Hey, Kurzovatan, and you think I almost killed you. Paulino, where is he? I dropped him off in town. He's gonna stand trial. That was a mistake. They will kill him here. I don't think so. Paulino does not stand a chance in your courts. I think he stands a better chance fighting for justice in our courts than you people stand fighting the townspeople with your guns. Besides, we've got an eyewitness to testify for us. Yes, Julio. Now, he's the one I want to talk to. Of course. Follow me. You'll bring an honored guest. Welcome to our village, Mr. Barkley. It's my honor, senor. See that Mr. Barkley's horse is watered and fed. Quickly. Please, Mr. Barkley. Rosa, some coffee and some of our delicious Basque bread. Mr. Barkley, we have heard rumors that you are going to defend Paulino. This is true. This is true. Wonderful, wonderful. With Gerard Barkley to defend him, our poor Paulino may yet have some small hope for justice. I was in court when you defended Arturo. A masterful job. Thank you, sir. But, of course, things have changed since then. Animosity has grown. The town has declared war on us. Seems to me you've kind of declared war on them, too. I was almost one of your casualties. I thought he was from the town. Terrible thing, war. Innocents caught in a crossfire. But, naturally, we just defend ourselves. Naturally. But as Polino's lawyer and a friend of your people, 
I must insist that you refrain from any more acts of provocation. But of course, we are the provoked, never the provocateurs. Well, that's reassuring. Although I've heard that there are those among you who preach violence, even anarchy. There are those amongst us who believe that law is evil when it operates only for the protection of the privileged. And it is the privileged who operate the law. You know, if you really believe that, you must either think I'm a dishonest man or a fool for having come here. <laughs> I am telling you what the anarchists believe. Maybe you can free Paulino and prove them wrong. I can try. He wants to speak with Julio. Naturally. And what Mr. Barclay wants, Mr. Barclay shall have. Julio! You will be honored to meet Paulino's lawyer, Senor Gerald Barclay. Hello. Paulino tells me you were with him on the day of the murder. Is that true? Yes. That day. I think it was that day. I am a shepherd, senor. Paulino and I, we spend many days together in the hills. One day is like another. Is there some question in your mind about that particular day? I will help my friend Paulino in any way I can. You can help him most by simply telling the truth. I will do what I can do. You're a witness in this case, an eyewitness. I have told you, I will speak for Paulino. It would help him more if you would speak to me first. Now, Julio, you must understand that your friend's life may be in your hands. I need to go over your testimony very carefully. I have left my flock unattended. I must go to them. Tomorrow. Yes, you will come again tomorrow. And now, if there is nothing more... There is one thing. Paulino's dog. He asks that you bring it to him at the jail. Yes. I will try. Tomorrow. He's only a boy, very young. He's sick about his friend Paulino. You understand. Well. Thank you for the coffee and bread. Our pleasure, Senor Park. Rosa, take Senor Buckley to his horse. Anything we can do for you and Paulino, you will please call on us. I'll do that. Hello, Hello Don Bernardo. How are you? <laughs> Filthy sheep dog. Now, I'm a fair-minded man, but mark my words. If he yaps too much, out he goes. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. You see, he's an ordinary dog. He's a nobleman. <laughs> Julio, how is everything? Fine. And the wife? She's well. My flock. In good hands. Go. Thank you.
Cut yourself shaving, Counselor? I'd like to see my client, Sheriff. Your gun, Mr. Barkley. What happened? That'll be all, Sheriff. Sure you don't want to lodge a complaint? Well, there's nothing to complain about. You were right. I cut myself shaving. They did this to you. When did it happen? How? How many were there? Oh, maybe a half dozen. It was Miller's brother, Russ, huh? He was one of them. I couldn't see their faces. They wore hoods. But he wasn't one of them. They're all cowards. Towns people, they're all cowards. All cowards wear hoods. They were Basques, Polino. What? Basques. Oh, you're wrong. I couldn't believe it myself. But the one who whipped me, the one who seemed to be their leader, the way he stood, the way he moved, he reminded me unmistakably of Francisco. Oh, you're lying. They wore rope sole shoes, just like you. Well, that proves nothing. Why, the townspeople, that would be a very clever trick to wear rope sole shoes. There was a sheepdog there. How many of the townspeople have sheepdogs? But you were beaten out of your mind. Why, your eyes, your mind would playing tricks on you. Oh, is this some kind of a trick you're playing on me? I wish it were. Why? Why, is it possible? My friends? People I love them and live with them? Is it possible they're gonna turn against me? Why? I've asked myself that same question. Now, the townspeople, they'd like to take you out and string you up right now, wouldn't they? Yes, they made that clear, sir. But your friends, they want you to stand trial. Well, of course they do, because I'm innocent. Because they want you to be found guilty. What are you trying to say? To be found guilty and hanged, thereby proving that all foreigners get no justice in America, that they should become anarchists and fight to overthrow the government and its laws. You stop that, I warn you. They're using you, Paulino, and they'll continue to use you. Only I scared them. Scared them that I might get you free and rob them of their martyr. Get out! You're no longer my lawyer. All right, Paulino. I can get out. Then you'll have accomplished what they failed to do last night, get rid of me. Send you to court with no defense, another black eye for American justice. Now believe me, Polino, I want to be your friend and your lawyer, because I honestly believe I can get you free. What do you say? All right. Barclay, if what you say is true, then how come Julio comes here as my friend to bring my dog, to bring me hope? If what you say is true, if my own people want to see me hang, then how come Julio comes here to testify for me? You answer me that! animals in town. They will stop at nothing. Please sit down. Coffee for Senor Barkley. I was hopeful violence could be avoided. I want to talk to Julio. Julio is gone. Sold his flock, left his house behind. I see. Terrible. Terrible thing for Julio to do. With Paulino, you, all of us, counted on Julio's testimony. But I can understand his fear. What was he afraid of? What we are all afraid of, of being murdered. And Julio in particular, he has heard their threats. We have all heard what they will do to Julio if he testifies. Who made those threats? Come now, senor. The town, the good people of Pinewood. The same good people who drag you from your bed, beat you. 
What are you going to do now, Mr. Barclay? Julio, our eyewitness, our one chance of freeing Paulino, gone. Julio may be gone, but not our chance to free Paulino. Come now, senor. We both know that without an eyewitness, Paulino stands no chance. Little enough chance in your court with an eyewitness. How long have you lived in this country, Francisco? What has that to do with anything? I was just wondering how long it took you to learn to hate us, so... Or did you hate before you came here? Hate? Ah, far from it. I came here with heart full of hope. You see, Mr. Barclay, I believed all your lies. The land of the free, the home of the brave. We welcome you with open arms. We welcome you. You, you stinking, dirty Basque. Welcome you, so long as you stay in your own little backyard. No, senor. I didn't hate when I came here, but I learned. The good people in Pinewood are excellent teachers. If Paulino were convicted and hanged, you'd gain recruits, wouldn't you? Well, don't count on his being a martyr for your cause. Admit it. You cannot win without Julio's testimony. It would have made it easier. But you see, I don't have to prove Paulino innocent. The state of California has to prove him guilty beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt. I hope you'll attend the trial, Francisco. You may learn something. ma'am. Courthouse burnt down last July and never did get it rebuilt. Thank you. Hold it. Any complaints? It is your country. I did not expect to be treated as an equal. Jared. Mother, what are you doing here? Well, I came to watch the trial. You don't mind, do you? Believe me, I can use all the moral support I can get. Yes, I can see that. Oh, oh yes, well, don't pay any attention to that. It may give me a little sympathy with the jury. Just sit down right there. Now, you say that this friend of yours came running into this very bar. I was standing right over there. I was having a few drinks, and Pete came running in, and he said... Objection, hearsay. He said that dirty Basque anarchist gunned down my brother Bill in cold blood. Let the record show that dirty Basque anarchist refers to the defendant. Your Honor, I object to any portion of this hearsay testimony being admitted to the record. Let's see where it's going, and then I'll rule on it. In my opinion, Your Honor, the jury has heard more than enough already. Any more questions for this witness? Yes. When Pete Hawkins came running into this bar, did he say that he had actually seen the defendant shoot your brother? He's seen that Basque fire them shots clear as I'm seeing you. He's a liar. Order. Objection. If I have to warn your client again, Counselor, he'll be charged with contempt. And I insist, Your Honor, that you make a ruling on this hearsay testimony before it becomes indelibly engraved in the minds of the jury. You'll have ample opportunity to cross-examine Mr. Miller on his testimony. Mr. Miller's testimony, Your Honor, is what's at issue here. He's testifying to what a third party claims he saw. If indeed there is a Pete Hawkins at all. Well, everybody in town knows Pete Hawkins. Well, now, that's most reassuring. I'd like to meet the gentleman myself, right here in the witness box, where he can be duly cross-examined. Well, uh, he got himself a good job up San Francisco way. He said he'd try to get down here for the trial, but if he couldn't, uh, I could tell what he saw almost as good as he could. <laughs> Order! Your Honor. Counselor. Come in. 
Hello, Mother. How was dinner? Very nice. No, as a matter of fact, I don't even remember what I ordered. Adam hardly touched a bite, and you know how he likes food. He's very disturbed, John. Yes, I can imagine he Naturally, would be. Actually, he couldn't or wouldn't talk about the trial, but I think we well, ought Well, I don't think we should discuss it. I think we have to. You know, there were times in court today when you sounded as though... when you looked as though you hated him. Well, it's... It's been an emotional trial. No, 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 it's beyond that. All right, if you insist. Beyond that, I believe that our esteemed friend, Adam Cross, is doing everything in his power to hang an innocent man. I don't think you really believe that. He's making it awfully difficult for me to believe anything else. Jared, I was proud that you had the courage to defend Paulino, knowing he was an anarchist, knowing that he stood for everything you opposed. Mother, I am simply a lawyer defending a man on a specific charge of murder. Now, if it takes courage to do a thing like that, then there is something terribly wrong. All right, then there is something terribly wrong. But be careful how you fight it. Make Adam your friend, not your enemy. Make Adam my friend. Will you for one minute forget what he means to us? And try to remember the man that sat on that bench this afternoon, a frightened man. That's not true. I've known Adam for over 30 years. I've seen him face down a pack of killers. He's not afraid of the people in Pinewood. Oh, no, no. He's not afraid of the people in Pinewood. He's afraid of an idea, a word, anarchist. Now, believe me, that's an idea that frightens me, too. But this is no way to fight it. And I can only hope that Adam sees that before he makes Polino a martyr for a cause we all reject. No, no, you are wrong about Adam. You're judging him. And you're being as bigoted and narrow-minded as the people you condemn. Well, that may be. But the next time you see Adam, tell him this for me. That the sworn enemies of law are fear, ignorance, and violence. And we who serve the law must fight these specters wherever they raise their brutish heads. You won't have to remember it verbatim. Chances are Adam will. He wrote it. <laughs> bunch of hooligans tried to set fire to the jail. Now, let me give fair warning, once and for all. Anyone caught committing such acts will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Now then, defense counsel has asked for a ruling concerning that portion of Mr. Miller's testimony as related to Peter Hawkins. The court rules that portion of the testimony is hearsay and should be stricken from the record. The jury will disregard it. How do you disregard something that is already in your mind, Mr. Barclay? Now, you say that on the afternoon of September 4th, you were nowhere near the ranch of the deceased William Miller. Is that correct? That's right. I was up in the hills with my sheep. Well, that's at least 10 miles away from where Mr. Miller was killed. And yet you heard Mr. Miller's brother state that there was a so-called eyewitness, a Mr. Peter Hawkins, who saw you commit the crime. What do you say to that? I say that if this eyewitness was right here, I would call him... Object. The counsel is examining on the basis of hearsay testimony already stricken from the record. Stricken from the record, but not before it was heard in this court. Objection sustained. Loud and clear by every member of the jury. I'd like my client to respond to that testimony. I've already and then ruled. his honor can have both the testimony and the rebuttal stricken from the record. I ask your next question, counselor. Now, you say that you spent that entire day with your sheep. Is that correct? Yes, sir. From sunrise to sunset. Well, then, I take it that you're calling this so-called eyewitness, this Mr. Hawkins, a liar. I swear by everything I have holy that this man is a liar, yes. And I further plead, gentlemen, that the district attorney obtain a subpoena and force this Mr. Hawkins to come to this court and testify so that my client may face his accuser. I am and just so doing, there might be several interesting questions that I could ask, such as... Just where was this Mr. Hawkins hiding when he supposedly saw Polino fire the fatal shots? Or, 
Why didn't he try to prevent the murder of his friend? Or, failing that, I object strenuously to counsel's clever tricks. He's trying to make the jury think that somebody else killed Miller. Objection sustained. We've already ruled that Mr. Miller's testimony is to be disregarded as hearsay. Now, let me warn you, don't bring it up again. I beg the court's pardon. Senor Arietta, are you an anarchist? Objection. The defendant's politics are not on trial. Here. Politics? I thought we were talking about a club that condones murder as a means to an end. The state of California is not going to take Polino Arietta's life just because his politics happen to be repugnant. Unless, of course, the state of California has rescinded the Bill of Rights. I will sustain the objection. The district attorney will rephrase his question. Well, now, let me say, uh... We can't talk about uh, Senior Arietta's politics, and um, we can't talk about what an eyewitness to the murder said, because, because that's hearsay. It, um, <laughs> makes it makes it kind of difficult to uh, get at the truth. Now, me, if, if the defense uh, could produce an eyewitness to testify to the innocence of Senior Arietta, well, I'd be pleased as punch to hear all about it. <laughs> no, sir, you get no objection from the state. Now, as a matter of fact, I, I think I remember you, you had just such a witness, counsel, the uh, name of um, uh, uh, Julio de Aguirre. Your Honor, this is totally irrelevant. Senor Arietta, do you believe in the violent overthrow of this government? Objection. Objection overruled. Let's see where he's heading before jumping him. Answer the question. Paulino, you don't have to answer that question. Mr. Buckley, I'd like to answer this question, if you don't mind. No, sir, I don't believe in violence. Except when the laws are bad. When they don't protect the common man. Then you just take the law into your own hands, right? Well, if this is the only way by which I can win justice, yes. Did you believe the law of Pinewood was protecting you and the other Basque sheep herders from the cattlemen? No, I... I believe that the law here is on the side of the cattlemen. Bill Miller was a cattleman, wasn't he? Well, I was told so. I didn't know him. That's enough reason to hate him. Objection. It's enough reason for an anarchist to kill him. Objection, Your Honor. I did not kill him. I didn't even know him. But they threatened us. They said that they would run us off the hills. They threatened to kill our sheep. The law was too slow for you. Hmm? Objection, Your Honor. That's a conclusion. So you just took the law right into your own hands. You took a gun into your own hands, and then you went hunting for Bill Miller. Objection. He's leaving the witness. He came out of his house. He mounted his horse. You shot him in the back. Objection. You killed him the way you'd kill a fly. Without remorse and without guilt. Because you have been poisoned. Poisoned in your heart and soul by a foreign political philosophy. Objection, Your Honor. Poison, so you can no longer reason right Your Honor, I object to Poison, so you are now like a jungle animal. A wild animal who kills anything that gets in his way. That's all I've got to say. Your Honor, I stated a number of objections which the bench did not reply to. I take it that they were denied. You take it very well, Counselor. I move for a mistrial. Denied. I request permission to approach the bench and lay foundation. You're in contempt. And you, sir, have lost control of this court by a series of judicial errors which have denied my clients so much as a semblance of due process. This court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I request to see his honor in his chambers. I will see defense counsel in this courtroom tomorrow morning, at which time I will rule on his motion. I would be impressed by your performance, Mr. Barclay. We both didn't know that all your sound and fury signifies nothing, and that the wheels of your justice were long ago oiled to grind Paulino into the dust. Who is it? Victoria Barclay, may I come in? Sit down, please. 
I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, not at all. Can I, can I get you something? Coffee, some brandy or something? No, see? not a thing. There are certain advantages to having my chambers in the saloon. Thank you. Adam, last night Jared and I had words. Victoria, if this has any bearing on you the case... You know what he feels you're doing. Oh, yes. He's made that quite clear. Is he wrong? Victoria... You know I can't talk about the case. Forget the case. This is between two very old and very good friends. Now, last night, Jared said some things I couldn't, I wouldn't believe. But today in court, he... Well, you tell me. You tell me, and I'll walk out of here and never question you about this again. Is Jared wrong? Victoria, please. Is he very... wrong? Is he... It's a most complex case, Victoria. It's like an iceberg. Ninety percent of the issues are... Jared hidden. says there's only one issue. Is Paulina guilty or innocent? He says you're frightened of what Paulina represents, and so I ask you once again... Is Jared wrong? I'd like to see him. I'm going back to the hotel. I'll tell him. Ain't that their witness? I didn't ask you here to give you an explanation. There's no excuse for what I've done. You were right. I was frightened. And frightened men don't think very clearly. The simple truth is that I wanted Paulino Arietta to be guilty. And that's a judgment no judge may make. I'm declaring a mistrial. I wish you wouldn't do that, Adam. Jared, there's no way of reversing my judicial errors. I could lecture the jury from here to eternity, but I've let bias be planted in their minds, and there's no rooting it out at this 11th hour. It'll be vindicated in a new trial. There's no question about that. The state has no case. I can say that now. I won't be sitting at the new trial. He may be vindicated at a new trial. Unless the situation grows worse. In which case, Adam, he may not live long enough to stand for a new trial. And in the meantime, he sits in a hostile jail. Oh, uh, unless it's very important... It's important, Judge, very important. Come in, Julio. Mr. Buckley. What brought you back? If I could have a, a little glass of whiskey. Huh? Francisco told me Paulino was doomed. With or without my testimony, he ordered me to run. He said in this way I could best serve our cause. And Cisco was wrong. Was he not, Mr. Buckley? He was wrong. Paulino is innocent. He was with me the day Miller was killed. If I testify to this, Paulino will be freed, will he not? To justice. to escape, busted me over the head. I yelled for him to stop. But, but it was like he was plumb loco. Never stood a chance with two of my men with rifles there. He never stood a chance. Well, I wouldn't feel too bad about it, Sheriff. The Basque is dead. Pinewood is saved for the future. 
And I wouldn't worry for a second, Sheriff, that you might have killed an innocent man. We ain't never gonna know that for sure now. He's still alive. Paulino! He lives! He lives! Some of you men help me get him over to my office. Come on. What's the matter, Sheriff? Afraid he may live to tell the truth? He don't mean nothing to me. I was just doing my job. He tried to escape. You saw Julio come into town, didn't you? The bass boy? Sure, we seen him. His testimony might have cleared Paulino. You think the court would take the word of a stinking Basque? Shut up, Russ. Well, he's trying to make it out that we shot Arietta because we were scared he might get proved innocent. He tried to escape. In broad daylight? With his arm in a sling? Knowing the street was full of guns with fingers just itching to pull the trigger and kill him? No. No, you can't prove that. I say he tried to escape. Nobody can prove different. Well, that remains to be seen. There'll be a hearing, Sheriff. In the meantime, I'll just take your badge. I'll appoint an interim sheriff and deputy. Alive and a free man, Sheriff. Paulino Arietta would be living proof that our American justice makes us much stronger than any alien philosophy. If he dies, you will not only have murdered an innocent man, but created a martyr for the anarchists. I wonder if men like you can really understand that. Finish your work and get some sleep. Here's a gentleman to see you. It is late. I hope I am not disturbing you. Oh, that's all right. Thank you, Silas. I will say what I must say and say it quickly. From the Basque community to our respected and honored friend, Counselor Gerald Barclay. Well, I, uh, I thank you. Paulino wanted to come and present these personally, but a half dozen bullet wounds. It will take even a Basque a few more days to fully recover. I, uh, I trust that those sheepskins are full of good Basque wine. That will wait on the tasting. Uh, well, at any rate, it's, it's more than I expected. I told my people to wait on this until the hearing was over. I told them that perhaps it was just another trick for the benefit of the gullible Basques, that you weren't really serious about trying the sheriff and the others. My people feel you have done enough already. And what do you think, Francisco? I admit, I was surprised when you had that man Hawkins up in San Francisco indicted as Miller's murderer. Did you really think that we'd just disregard his confession? I don't know what I thought. I admit it, Mr. Barclay. You confused me from the first, taking on the case, staying with it even after we... after we beat you. Well, that's all over with now. Paulino is free. Won't you join us in a glass of wine, Mr... De Navarre, Francisco. De Navarre. That's lovely. It has been a long, hard ride. And if it would not be too much trouble. I'll get the glass. Just for yourself, madame. Just for yourself. Shure Osakariari, to your help. Um, I, I think I'd like to watch you first. Shure Osegariari.
Took your time in getting here. Lay in there? Yes. You got everything straight? Sure. Which one is it? Nick. Good, good, good. Hold it. I'm a farmer, Frank. You're a candidate, Josh. Don't ever forget that. See, make it uh, definite on the sugar beets. <clears throat> That's the entire crop. All of it. Now, let me have 3,000 bushels of your olives. You want an option on the rest? Now, let me check back east, and I'll let you know in a couple of days, all right? All right. Now, I'll take 6,000 bushels of your peaches. If it's all right with you, I'd like a three-day option on the rest. You got it. Thank you. Seems to me you're buying a powerful lot of Barclay produce, sir. Sorry, but in this way, couldn't help overhearing. I guess maybe I was eavesdropping. It's a bad habit. But when a man's running for public office, I guess he's got a duty to keep up with all that's going on. In case my campaign literature hadn't caught up with me yet, name's Hawks. Joshua Hawks. Yeah, I've heard of you, Hawks. Now, if you don't mind, we'd like to back to our business here. Well, I don't mind, but maybe this fella here and the people he buys for should. Hawks, you've been running off with the mouth up and down this state. I can't even keep up with the charges you've made. <laughs> That's probably because you wasn't interested, young fella. But I got something in the works now that I think is going to interest you, Barclay, something fierce. Yeah. As a matter of fact, it ought to interest you too, sir. The sooner you know about it, the better. I think that our business is finished, Mr. Barclay. Well, now, you don't know it yet, mister, but you ain't got no business with them. That is, unless, of course, the... People you represent don't mind buying produce that was growed on stolen land. That's right. That's right. Gentlemen, I accuse this man's daddy, Thomas Barkley, of having stole every foot of land his family lays claim to, pirated, and stole in as black a series of crimes as the West has ever witnessed. Take it outside, friend. It's all right, Rudy. Let him finish. I accuse your daddy of being a tyrant, a common thief. And before I leave this valley, everybody's going to know that I speak the truth. Everybody's going to know before you leave this club, Hawks. You're going to prove every word you said is true or take it all back. It's all right, folks. It's all right. I expected violence. Well, you can beat me up, boy, but you can't shut me up. Proof. Proof, Hawks, that every word you said about my father is true. It will out, boy, but in my time, not yours. Oh, yes, do with me what you will. You can torture me, beat me, even kill me. But the truth will ring free over the sound of your hired guns. Wait a minute, sonny, I ain't through. Above the clank and the clamor of the chains with which you've enslaved your neighbors. You can beat me. You can kill me. But the truth... The truth shall set us all free!
And with that, Nick Barkley delivered, continued on page three. Delivered a smashing left-hand blow to the jaw. It was a right hook. Which fell the surprise hawks like a rope steer. Oh, you've seen it. And I'll tell you something else. There were a half a dozen people there that congratulated me for shutting hawks up. And another dozen that told me to tell them the next time I decided to hit them, and they'd buy tickets. Wonderful, Nick. Wonderful. You committed a public service. Maybe you should run for governor. I'd stand a better chance of being elected than Hawks would, and I'd make twice the governor he would. And if you think for one minute that I'm going down there and apologize for Nick, him... Nick, I'm not saying the man doesn't deserve something. He deserves our silence, our contempt. By hitting him, you gave that idiotic charge half the front page. Then I say we use it to our advantage. It's one thing for him to go around telling a few people that we stole our land, and it's another thing entirely for him to plaster it all over the largest newspaper in this valley. I say we sue him for libel. And I say he's hoping and praying that that's exactly what we do. You couldn't have done more for his campaign if you went out and personally got him 50,000 votes. Nick, the man can't buy that kind of publicity. So we just let him go on lying about us. He's not going to go on lying about us. Ha! Huh. Unless we sue him for libel. Believe me, I know the breed. Strictly hit-and-run tactics. Tomorrow, he'll forget all about the Barclays, scatter his buckshot on some other target. And the day after that, another and another. That's been his pattern up to now. Bigger and better lies, bigger and better targets. It all makes Hawks more important. But, Jared, somebody has to challenge him, stop him, make him stay put long enough to face up to his charges. Mother, unless we dignify him by paying attention to him, he's not going to get any votes in this valley. Maybe not, but I stopped by Dan Sheridan's on the way to see if we could count on him for the picking. And? He said sure he'd be by if we can prove Hawks is lying. Dan said that? Right. Well, I'll talk to him. Well, I wouldn't count on it because he put his foot down. Well, I'll kick it out from under him. Oh, Nick. All right, all right. I don't want him working for us anyway. There's a lot more people in this valley that are much more willing to work. Well, I'm going into town to see if I can find some of those. You want to come along? Yeah. Jared, how many Dan Sheridans do you think there are in the valley? Up until a minute ago, I wouldn't have said there was one. Put it down I here. saw him winding up to throw that haymaker ten minutes before he threw it. <laughs> I tell you, I thought I was going to have to run into his fist. Hey, Edna, darling, would you put some cream and sugar in that for me like a darling girl? And uh, just let yourself go. I sure do like sweets. Yeah, that's a darling girl. When you've done... Thank you. Yeah, you sit down and chat with us a spell. Thanks, Josh, but I've just taken out some sewing. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. A pretty woman like you sit around and be admired. And let your campaign manager run around with holes in his socks. <laughs> Frank, what's the matter with you? If I had a woman like that, I sure wouldn't have her. Darn and much. Right. Josh? Hey, Josh. Look. Oh, good, Donald. Good. Print it up a thousand. Yeah. Hired three guys to help me. Gonna pay them a silver dollar apiece. Yeah, good, down, good. Well, if they're waiting for me, I better get them started. Yeah. May I see them? I accuse Tom Barkley. Very colorful language. Obviously not yours. Mm, oh, it ain't his. It's mine. Sure, you knock a man's wind out. You don't wait for him to catch his breath. You move in for the kill. And maybe get killed. I warned you, never put charges in writing. They can be used against you. I told you a dozen times, never repeat the same charge in the same place. All right. When you're bluffing, Josh, never put yourself in the position to be caught. All right. Well, Mick, maybe I was a little too uh, impetuous. That's five dollar word he learned me. Go on and call it all off. Uh, Josh, we ain't gonna let these go to waste. Now, you want me to be governor, don't you, Daniel? Do as I say. Go. How could you? And without asking my advice. All right! 
Well, Frank, right. when I get to be governor, I'm going to clear every decision with you first. <laughs> now, come on. Let's see one of them nice old smiles. Come on. Come on. <laughs> well, there it is, friends. You know now where I stand. I want to tell you something, neighbor. No. No, I want to... I want to promise you that wherever there is corruption, wherever there's a fat old cat with his hand in the public treasury, stealing from the working man, the farmer, the man who's trying to dig a living out of the hard soil with his bare hands, wherever, wherever there is corruption, I'm going to turn a light on it. I'm going to look out for your interests. I'll tell you something else. You send Joshua Hawks to Sacramento, and you can call the governor of this great state your friend. And that'll be the truth. Well, now, questions from anybody? That'll fill up them coffee cups again, pass out some more of them good homemade donuts. Now, there's got to be some questions. <laughs> now, come on, there's got to be some questions. Anybody you'd like punched in the nose, name him. I'm your man. Yes, friend. I understand you've been yapping about Tom Barkley being a thief, stealing every foot of his land. We'd like to hear tell about that. Would you, friend? You'd like to hear about Tom Barkley, would you? All right, neighbor. You'll hear. Daniel, I reckon these neighbors of ours would like to see these. Circulate. Pass him out. Now, I haven't spoken about this since Nick Barkley viciously attacked me. I haven't spoken about it since them circulars was printed. You say Mr. Hawks has been circulating these. Come now, Mr. Wesley. Every time he can gather an audience of two, and you know it. Though the fact is, I didn't know. You know, types like you and your candidate usually use the hit-and-run tactic. Kind of a shame you didn't this time, because now it's going to cost you. There's no need to act like this. You're a lawyer, I'm a newspaper man. Neither of us was born yesterday. How many times have you skirted the truth in court to help a client, to make a legal point? Let's don't embarrass us both, Mr. Wesley. I want a complete and full retraction to every allegation. Frank! Say, Frank! Well, well, I better put up my guard, Mr. Jared Barkley. A little late for that, Mr. Hawks. Remember, a complete and full retraction in writing, or else. Or else. <laughs> what are you going to do, super libel? Josh, let me handle this. Well, they can go whistle for it. You're bluffing. You don't want no long, drawn-out court case, and you know it. That's the point, Mr. Barkley. A drawn-out court case, even if you win it, will do you more harm than good. Keep the charge alive. Now, why don't we sit down here and try and discuss this reasonably? There ain't going to be no discussion, because there ain't going to be no retraction. I get under your skin, and you know it. The fat cat's beginning to itch, and you're going to itch a lot more before I'm through with you. I'm going to make them Barkley scratch till they bleed. Well, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Hawks. <laughs> thank me for making what I'm going to have to do to you such a pleasure. Good day, gentlemen. Well, now you've done it. Huh? I warned you not to put this in writing. <laughs> Our campaign I warned you not to carry this to the point where we'd have to put up or shut up. Now, look. I ain't running. Now, that charge I made sticks. The charge you made? The charge I invented? Invented, Josh! Well, they're thieves, all of them. All them rich landowners stole some of their land, and the richer they are, the more land they stole, and if we keep digging up dirt, we'll bury them. How do you mind? I spent weeks digging into the Barclays' personal history, business dealings, nothing. The purest driven snow. But you know that as well as I do. Yeah. Yeah, and I know something else, something else you taught me. You said if you can't prove nothing, then accuse them of the wildest charge you can, and you said, Let's accuse Tom Barkley of stealing every foot of his land. You know, I say maybe he did. I say let the charge stick. And I say we've got a tiger by the tail. 
And I say we can ride it right into the governor's mansion if you got the guts. It's not a question of guts. <laughs> you know, when we started on this track, about a thousand miles behind all the other candidates. I remember you were scared for me. I remember you were saying, I wonder if I should waste my time and energy on a fellow who might crack under the pressure. It never entered my head that you might crack under the pressure, Frank. Oh, you've been a good teacher. Yes, you have. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have gotten nowhere without you, but now I'm wondering maybe. Just maybe you've taught me all you can. Maybe if things are getting too hot for you, it might be better for both of us if you got off right now. I don't know, Josh. Maybe you're right. Maybe we can fight them. Maybe I can dream up some documents. They say a friend of yours worked in the land office. He's dead now, so of yeah, course... as they say, dead men tell no lies. Maybe we can drown them in official-looking documents, and by the time they check them out, I will be governor. I'll be governor. Of course. some exercise and I wasted half a day. Then Hawks intends to continue making those charges. Possibly invent a few more. You know, we may have underestimated our Mr. Hawks. He's a little smarter than I thought. At any rate, he called my bluff. Why a bluff? Well, it just plain takes too long to win a liable suit and he knows it. But I may have figured out another way. I stopped by to see Senator Palmer, ask him to form a committee. A committee? A committee? Mm. Four unbiased men whose word is beyond reproach, no axe to grind, who will demand that Hawks put his evidence into the record. You better tell our friend Senator Palmer to round up his committee in a hurry. Since we're bleeding. Now, that'll only take a couple of days. Surely we can wait that long. Oh, we can wait that long. I'm not too sure about our crops. Dave's holding up his order. He got word from the people he buys from back east to hold up until this whole business with Hawks is settled. Well, that's ridiculous. Dave's people say we've been charged with stealing our land. The titles are all clouded. And if what Hawks says is true and the land's not ours, neither is the produce we grow on it. Governor Joshua Hawks. Heaven help us. Josh, you fit the battle of Jericho, Jericho. Jericho, Josh, you fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls come a-tumbling down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the next governor of the great state of California, Joshua Adam Hawks! Yeah! Hooray for Josh. Gosh, you uh, How about a little speech, Gov? Well, sure, folks, but first, I want to have a little drink. Yeah, you bet you. Yeah. Wesley! Wesley, we're having, having a little celebration, Wesley boy. Come on, you and the old lady. Come on, join the governor for... For a little drink. If you're in bed, get out. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna count to three and then I'm coming in. One, two. Josh, you hear the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho. Coming to bed? Soon. Go to sleep, Edna. Frank, you've got to leave him. I can't. 
It's come to that, hasn't it? You lie, cheat, you don't care who you hurt. As long as it would take him one step closer to the governor's chair. For as long as it takes us. We both knew it would be a long, hard fight when we got into it. Where does it end? I can't take it anymore. The way he looks at me. He treats you with such, such contempt. He's under pressure. We're all under pressure. The worst of him is coming out. But once she's governor... Frank, that's the most hideous warped dream of all. Oh, darling, no, you're wrong. Do you remember the first time we saw him? <laughs> when he was running for a sheriff in a whistle-stop town? <laughs> what a sight he was. Belly hanging over his belt and a stubble of a beard. I wondered why everyone wasn't laughing. Because they saw it, too. And heard it. The way I heard it. Some kind of magic. Power, something very special. If only I could harness it. You found the power and the glory in him, Frank. But you haven't harnessed it. He's a child. He's learned to walk and talk again. He's feeling his oats. All right. I'll give him a little rope. Let him get snarled in it. Just a little while longer, darling. Just a little more time. <laughs> Frank! Frank! Josh! 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 got himself stinking drunk and nearly set fire to himself and the hotel. What's burning in here? But for your next door neighbors, it might have been you. Next time you start drinking, you better be sure your lamp is out. Josh, 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 you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. What are all those people doing there? What is this, a circus? Get them out of here. Josh. All right, folks, clear out. Everything's under control. Wait. Go on, everything's under control. Wait, wait. Hold it, folks, folks, I'm purely sorry to interrupt your slumbers this way, but if there's anybody here from the hotel management, I want it to be known that I ain't paying one cent of this fire damages. No, sir, that bill goes where it belongs, to the Barclays. Now, I ain't saying they started this fire. There ain't no evidence of that yet. But it does seem funny to me that on the one night when I was working on papers, that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that Tom Barclay stole every foot of his land that this had to happen. Ah, oh, it's gonna be all right. You can rest easy. I don't believe they'll try her again, and if they do, I'll be ready for him. Nobody's gonna shut me up, but I'm speaking for you folks. Now, uh, good night to you all, and God bless you. Good night, neighbors. Good night. <laughs> good night. Good night. Hey, <laughs> hey. Makes sense, don't it? The Barclays burning up old Josh and his evidence. <laughs> Come on, Frank. <laughs> How nice to see you. Sure Come in. I'll have Silas get us some coffee. No, here. thank you. I, I will only be staying but a minute. Oh. And uh, considering the nature of my visit, I'm not sure you'll want me to stay any longer. Oh. I gather you haven't read this morning's paper yet. Oh. Someone tried to set fire to Josh Hawk's hotel room last night. He says he thinks you Barclays were behind it. And what do you think? Well, naturally, I think it's ridiculous. But I am a newspaper editor, Victoria. And news, no matter how ridiculous or how false, news is news, so you printed the story, hmm? Well, I'll print your side, too, and oh, type Oh, now, you know perfectly well I won't dignify this with a denial. Well. 
Congratulations, Peter. That's quite an article. All hawks, or did you embellish it with some of your purple prose? All right, Jared, think what you like. But you can't laugh him off any longer. He's a candidate for governor, and he's gaining support. No small thanks to you. I don't suppose you bothered to check this out before you plastered it all over the front page. I didn't vouch for the authenticity of that story. No, you just printed it right out of Hawk's mouth, knowing full well that anything printed in a so-called reputable newspaper would have a certain ring of truth. I can't help what people think. But believe him or not, there's no denying that whatever Joshua Hawks says or does is news, and I have to... I'm sorry. What the devil did he come here for? To apologize, I think. Jared, do you think people will believe this? Well, I've already heard remarks like, where there's smoke, there's fire, or, uh, quote, would a man running for governor make such charges without evidence, unquote. And there's a little matter of Senator Palmer having to talk to more than a couple of dozen men just to get the four to sit on the committee. Maybe we're lucky to get the four. They meet Saturday morning. I'll finish writing this in my room, Josh. Oh, this... you write it. Let me read it. Well, I'll be reading the state. You'll be reading it, but it's supposed to be coming from me. I don't like it. All I'm saying is that the... I can read, Frank. You're saying that I don't want to appear in front of a hand-picked Barclay committee. Well, because they're biased against you and therefore unable to render an impartial judgment. A committee composed of a judge, a doctor, a minister and a senator. No, people will say I'm weaseling out, trying to run away. I never backed off in a fair fight yet. A fair fight? Why, we've lied and cheated all the way down the line. A slaughter us. I warned you not to yell too loud, not to press your luck, but you wouldn't listen, would you? You had to pile it on, twist the knife deeper and deeper and deeper. Well, now you've done it. And if somehow we do manage to stay out of jail, Maybe you can go back to digging a few dollars out of the dirt. Maybe that's all you're good for. A stupid dirt farmer! Oh, get out of here. Get out of here. What do you want, Josh? Shall I clear out? Oh, you want to stay, stay. There's a job for you here. All right, Josh. All right. Josh? Uh, Josh, uh, I give Mrs. Barkley your message. Uh, uh, personally. Mrs. Barkley? Josh, surely not now. Good night, Frank. Well, what did she say? Uh, all set. Well, <laughs> well, well. She's going to see me, the great lady herself, face to face. Well, I waited a long time for this, Daniel, and now she's coming. No, we ain't licked yet. Not by a long shot. Jared, Nick, and Audra took turns last night trying to talk you out of this. Would I be wasting my breath, too? Yes, he. I thought so. You know, you're a stubborn woman. Yes, he. All right, why do you think Hawks wants to see you? I don't know, which is why I want to see him. You know, you don't mind if I stay around and wait for you, you do you? No, as a matter of fact, I was going to suggest it. In the heat. Thanks for not telling me that curiosity killed a cat.
Come in, come in. I was uh, going to mix myself a drink. You uh, care to join me? No, thank you. Sit down, please. Please. I uh, hope you don't mind. Mind? Well, I mean, a handsome widow woman like you, alone in a hotel room with a man. Oh, my reputation has survived worse assaults, but thank you for caring, Mr. Hawks. Oh, make it, Josh. Now, what's bothering you, Mr. Hawks? Bothered me. Nothing bothered me. I figured it'd be some bothering you. Oh, a minor annoyance, which we're about to take care of for good. Now, if that is all. Sit down. Please. 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 Um. I was just that I heard that. Uh, one of your produce fires, a big one, uh, canceled out on the deal. Another minor annoyance. And he didn't cancel, far from it. You know, you're getting up with these minor annoyances might add up to a big headache. But uh, there ain't no use for that. I got a lot of stumping to do before I wind up my campaign. And I guess maybe I have overstayed my welcome. <laughs> if you... Uh, Get what I'm driving at, Miss Bartley? Well, I'm sorry. Perhaps I'm a little naive about these matters. If uh, you would explain it a little bit more. You understand very well what I'm driving at. You're hurting, son. Nobody can tell me different. You're hurting, and you're going to hurt a lot worse before I'm through with you. Now, you try and nail me to the cross, and I'll fight you every way I know. And I know more ways than your kind ever dreamed of. So don't you think that... There ain't no need to do that. No need at all. Never did like to kick a man when he's down. We fried our fish here. Make a catch elsewhere. Los Angeles. Governor built a bridge down there. Taxpayers' money, fraud. Inferior materials, see what I mean? Other fish to fry. Tell you what. I'm going to let you Barclays off the hook. See what I mean? Off the hook. Well, that's very noble of you. <laughs> and you got caught up a little trying to wriggle free. Well, take it from old Doc Hawks. <laughs> You'll get well in a hurry. People forget in a hurry. We leave town business as usual. No hard feelings. Well, what do you say, Miss Barkley? Do we let up on one another? No, we do not, Mr. Hawks. Miss Barkley. All the time I've been talking, you've been looking. 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 Like you remembered me from somewhere. Well, don't you remember me, Mrs. Barkley? Go on. Get out. Why should I remember you? You shouldn't. It's a long time ago. I, I worked for you. I worked for your husband. Yeah. Broke my back. Planting and harvesting, putting money in Tom Barkley's pocket so he could put beautiful clothes on his beautiful wife and she could ride through her fields like a queen. And maybe... Maybe just once in a while she could look down and say hello with her lordly, queenly way to one of the peasants. You did that to me one time, one morning. You don't remember that, do you? No. She said, why, I don't believe we've met before. How do you do? I'm Victoria Barclay. Yeah. And anything that her highness can do for you, my good man, don't hesitate to speak up. <laughs> don't tell you something. I was grateful for them few words. Oh, yes, those few precious words. Hey, she spoke to me. 
She spoke to me, yeah. Stinking with sweat and covered with dirt. She actually stopped and passed the time of day with me. <laughs> well, why aren't you laughing? It's funny, you know. It's funny. Sure, a stupid ape thinking that you'd recognize him after all them years. Maybe if I covered myself with dirt, it might help, huh? <laughs> You've twisted your own memory into hate for us. We employed many men. My husband treated each and every one of them fairly, and if you didn't think so, you were free to leave. <laughs> I know. I'm wasting my breath. Good day, Mr. Hoff. Miss Barley! I'm going to meet you! I'm gonna beat you, Barclays! Beat you! Anything else, Mr. Small? Oh, uh, no, uh, I'll just take a few sticks along with me. Uh, you can send the rest up to the camp. Oh, I'll take a few, too. You want to sign for this? Oh, sure. Been working for the Barclays long, Mr. Small? About three or four months up the lumber camp. Uh, don't get into town much. They're the nice people, the Barclays. Nice to work for. Yeah. I put all the boxes away. Anything else? Oh, you can run along home, Steve. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. If you'd wait until after the meeting tomorrow morning. One day more or less, Edna. Anybody at home? Hey! Yes! Hey, Frank, I wanted you to come in and join me for a... What appears to be a farewell drink. Well, you're deserting a sinking ship, Edna. Edna hasn't been feeling too well, Campaign so... Campaigning and getting too much for you, huh? It's not a matter of quantity, but quality. Excuse me. Ain't you gonna stick around and see what happens at that meeting tomorrow? Josh, about that meeting, I think I figured a way to play out our hand. It's an old lawyer's trick. I thought that instead of showing up with a lot of official-looking documents, no. well, what? I said no. I promised the people of this valley that I had enough evidence in that briefcase to blast the Barclays off their land. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna weasel out. I don't understand you. You mean you're gonna walk into that room but they'll rip you apart. You'll be lucky to walk out of there alive. Oh, I'll walk out alive. There ain't no luck to it. It's planning. You ought to know that, Frank. Careful planning. Josh, you about ready? Yeah, I'm about ready now. Well, I reckon it's goodbye. Goodbye, Josh. Good luck. <laughs> He's not bluffing. He's up to something. I wish I knew what it was. Do you, Frank? Where is he going this time of night? You're not leaving until tomorrow morning, so I thought that maybe when I get back... We, we might... can talk, Frank, but you won't talk me out of it.
There's that crack board. Right there. That's where I'll be sitting. From the uh, time I like the fuse to first explosion, it'd be uh, two minutes. No, 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 no. Make her finer than that. All you gotta do is drop that book so I, I know, can hear it. I know. Amble out of the room, meet me out the back. I gotta boost out the window. All right, all right, all right, all right. Two minutes. We're gonna fix the bar case. Might even put him in jail. Maybe for murder, huh? <laughs> well, come on. What do you want me to do? Well, start stringing it out. spend all the time I could with her before she left. No need for that. I've decided to leave with her in the morning. Oh? When'd you come to that decision, Bry? Well, you said I was free to go the other day. That you had learned all you could from me. Oh, but you should have left the other day. And you sure shouldn't have come out here tonight. I didn't see anything. You were coming up out of the cellar when I arrived, that's all. He's lying. I'll leave town, Josh. Get on the first train out of here in the morning. I won't tell a soul. Tell him what? Thought you didn't see anything. I see. We kill him right now. All right, Josh. I'll leave tonight. Now. I'll ride out right now. I don't believe you, Frank. He was a good teacher. You taught me an awful lot, and you rung me a long way, but you taught me that I should never carry any liabilities. And that's what you are to me right now, Frank. You stand in my way. Let me get it now. No, no, Frank. You'd run right to the sheriff, and I can't let you do that. No, that let her bring the whole town down on her head. Josh, you're mad! <laughs> Lost your nerve, Frank. You want this delivered, Mr. Barkley, or you're taking it along? I'll have uh, Steve bring it out to the ranch later on. All right, you want me to ship along a case of dynamite at the same time? Dynamite? A fellow from your lumber camp ordered a case of dynamite. Took a few sticks with him. What was his name? Well, I, uh... Got the bill right here somewhere. Yeah. Jack Small. Jack Small. We don't have any Jack Small at our lumber camp. I'm sorry, Mr. Barkley. Now, if he'd have took any more than three sticks of dynamite, I'd have made real sure he was working for you. But when he said to ship the rest of it out to the lumber camp, I... Now, why would anyone want to go to all that trouble just to steal three sticks of dynamite? That's what I'd like to know. What else can you tell me about this? Well, he, he Mr. was... Mr. Barkley. Oh. Yes, dear. Uh, I know the man who bought the dynamite yesterday. What was his name? Well, I don't know that, but a few days ago, he gave my brother a dollar to hand out some papers for him. They, 
They said some bad things about your father. Thank you, Steve. Mr. Hawks, it is getting a bit late. Yes, yes, I, I know, Judge. But Mr. Wesley, my campaign manager, has got to be here. Oh, very well, but we can't wait much longer. Yes, I don't know where he could be. He, he's got to be here. He helped me assemble the evidence in this briefcase. I'd better check outside. What are you doing here? You ain't supposed to be here. So you said, Mr. Hawks, you were afraid I might influence the jury. Well, I don't think anything could influence these men except the fact. I'm a little tired of hearing secondhand about the crimes we've committed. This time I'd like to face my accuser. Come, Victoria. Sit down. Thank you. All right with me. Let her stay. I'm gonna go check outside. Hawks. Oh, well, they're in there. Why didn't you join them? We'll join them. Look, you, you join them. Your mother's already ruined the meeting, so why don't the two of you run it? Now, I'm getting out of here. Hawks. Well, I'm a pretty good talker, Mr. Barkley, but I don't reckon I can argue with that. <laughs> Two sticks of dynamite are burning fuse down the cellar. Everybody out! Come on, move! Everybody out! Come on! Barkley! Barkley! Help me! Hawks are still in there. to know that the consul decided to put up a new building. They didn't have much choice, did they? Not after I offered to match the building cost dollar for dollar. Huh. Should have rebuilt the old one. Now, they're still digging out the wreckage. And you may be interested to know that they found our friend Mr. Hawk's briefcase containing all that damaging evidence against the Barclays. Wouldn't it have been something if he'd have pulled it off, killed those four men, then blamed us? Then have this turn up? Oh, he would have had an answer, an explanation. But the sad part of it is there would have been people who would have believed him. One thing that isn't so sad, while they've all been sitting around wondering whether or not they're going to buy our crops, price of peaches went up five cents a bushel. That is mighty sweet indeed. Did you say five cents a bushel? Mm-hmm. Well, I suppose now they'll be calling us pirates. Well, if anybody does, who believe him? Well, Mr. Counselor, your briefs. Let's get some dinner. Your move.
Hope everyone's all right. We lost an axle on that, and I'm going to need some help. Won't be but a few minutes, ma'am, if you'll wait over there. You fellas see if you can get some logs. I'll get the wheel. Sure could, mister. Nicholas, suppose we just go over this again, shall we? Now, as I understand it, you were in the woods. While you were pretending to keep yourself busy with some kind of paperwork, I was out risking life and limb trying to chase down that heifer we'd lost in the woods. Uh-huh. When suddenly this beautiful woman appeared out of nowhere... he made himself scarce, too, then. Uh-huh. This beautiful woman appeared out of nowhere and just flew into your arms. Is that correct? That is exactly how it happened. Uh-huh. Heath, what do you think about that? That well, sure sounds reasonable. Happens to me every time there's a storm. Well, you boys better let it go at that until the lady comes down and tell you what really happened. Relax, Nick. She'll be down in a minute. I'm relaxed. I'm relaxed. 
Would you care to, uh... No, 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 Nick, you're too relaxed. Teeth. How do you feel now? Much better, thank you. Order's been very kind. Would you like some tea? Just exactly what I need. I'll pour it, Mother. I know you're wondering how I happen to be running through the woods in that storm. Certainly not. Yes, we are, Miss Lynn. Please call me Sabrina. I'm afraid it's going to sound awfully silly. Oh, nothing would sound silly to me out there in a night like this. It was stupid of me, really. I was on the Stockton stage and it lost a wheel. It was so cold and windy. I thought I saw a light. It wasn't very sporting of me to leave the other passengers, I suppose. But then you found yourself lost, huh? And frightened. Those woods seemed filled with all the goblins I hadn't thought of since I was a little girl. I'll have some, too, Audrey, please. You mean tea? Yeah, tea. Jerry? Hmm? Oh, yes, certainly, certainly. Heath? By all means. You've all been so kind and thoughtful. Well, now, will you be staying in Stockton? Not for very long, I'm afraid. I have business in San Francisco. Well, now, that's not too far, is it? No, it isn't, in some ways. I'm so sorry. It's all right. That's that shutter I've been meaning to fix for the past two months. I'll take care of it right away. Uh, Heath, would you like to help me? I am sorry. Oh, that's all right. I expect you must be very tired. Wouldn't you like to go to bed? And one of the boys will take you into town in the morning. I guess I am tired. Would you say goodnight to the others for me? Of course. Thank you for everything, Audra. She's as nice as she is beautiful, isn't she? Very attractive. Well, shall I pour your tea now? My tea? Oh, I think you better save that for Nick. And you, uh, you went to that shooting contest at the fair next week. That's right, Preston. Well, now, that's, that's too bad. Because, uh, I'm gonna have to make you wish you entered that quilt and be instead. Say, Nick, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. See you, uh, Preston. <laughs> nice room for Miss Lynn, please. Yes, sir. A nice room with a window on the street. Say, aren't you the Miss Lynn that's missing off the stage? Well, I'm hardly missing, but yes, I am Miss Lynn. Well, the driver was here with your suitcase. You sure caused an uproar. He says that he was three hours looking for you. She's not missing now, is she? Oh, no, no, no. J j just follow me. Right this way. Well, Nick, you've done so much. You've been so kind, I hardly know what to say. Well, you could say you could let me show you around this afternoon. I mean, this is a beautiful country, but I'm afraid a beautiful stranger needs a guide. We could pack a picnic lunch. I'm afraid not. Well, what's the matter, though? Do you like picnics? Oh, I love them. But I think it's better this way. Well, this sounds like a guy. It is. Well, easy come, easy go. Please say goodbye to your family for me again, and, and thank Audra for lending me this dress. I'll see that it gets back to her this afternoon. Right, right. Nick? Yeah? Thank you especially.
Dick. Hey there, old buddy. Now, that wasn't fair. I mean, the least you could have done was introduced us. Ooh, that sure was some filly you heard. Now, that's true. Why, we ain't seen nothing around here that pretty in quite a spell. Now, who was she? Preston, will you take off? Oh, I hope I didn't offend you with that talk about taking you in that shooting contest. Uh, Preston, I am in a hurry. I mean, it, it may have been the wrong time to say that. True as it might be. Now, wait a minute. You really think you can outshoot me? Well, let me put it to you this way. You get yourself a lot of practice between now and next week. Now, let me put it to you this way. I don't think I need any practice. I think I can whip you right here and now. Oh, now, well, why wait? Let's settle this little contest right now. Now, of course, we might be thrown in jail for shooting in the street, but it's going to be worth it to shut your face up. Well, I ain't against it, old buddy. Not if you insist. Oh, I insist. You got the matches? Sure. Press, maybe uh, you're the one who ought to get in some practicing. Nice shooting, Nick. Well, you win some and you lose some. Shall I be ready? One o'clock. One o'clock will be just fine. Fancy get-up for fence riding, isn't it, Nicholas? Yeah, sure is, but not for picnicking. Picnicking? Mm-hmm. Boy, howdy. Somebody die? Neither one of you got any class. Where are you going that outfit? I'm going to pick up Sabrina, and we're going on a picnic. Going on a picnic? That's right. What do you think she sees in him? No accounting for taste. Eat your hearts out, boys. Eat your hearts out. Now, how about some more chicken? Mm. Woman should watch her figure. I thought that was a man's prerogative. Well, maybe it is. Oh, Nick. It's so beautiful here. It's just as you said. Big and grand. Beautiful. Well, speaking of beautiful, has anyone told you yet today that you are? Not yet. And I'm telling you. Thank you. Who are you, Sabrina? I thought I told you that. Well, you told me you were going to San Francisco on business, but well, there must be more. And I want to know everything about you. Well, after all, you are eating my chicken. Oh, well, in that case, 
I'm 22. I freckle in the sun. I'm still afraid of ghosts and goblins. I'm sad when it rains. And I love the sound of bells. Even that. Even? Well, now, what could possibly sound better than that? Nothing. Nothing in the world. <laughs> Except perhaps good fortune bells. Don't happen to have any on you, do you? Good fortune bells. My father brought some back once from India. And he said, when you find the right man, hang on to him. And hang these bells from the porch of your house. You know, I think I like your father. What was he? A sea cat? Importer. Ambassador. Do I look like an ambassador's daughter? You told me you were the daughter of a king, I'd believe you. My father was a king, in that he was loving and kind. He died when I was 11, and I went to live with an uncle. Who was not a king. Who was not a king. I left home when I was only 14. And I swore then that someday I was going to take everything that life owed me. Perhaps you should be careful, Nick. I may be dangerous. I'll be careful. Yeah, I don't think you can be. I don't think it's in your makeup to be careful. Uh -huh. And I think that's why I enjoy being with you so much. <laughs> no special girl for you? Oh, no. no. But I'm beginning to think my luck's gonna change. It's funny. You're so different from your brothers. Heath, still water in a pond. Jared, style, elegance. But you, impulsive. Uh huh? The violence of a summer storm followed by a rainbow. All right, now, that's enough about me. <laughs> what about you? Who you got in San Francisco waiting for you? You've gotten all the information from me you're going to get. A woman should have some mystery. No more questions. Talking never told a man what he wanted to know anyway. Well, this time it really is goodbye, Nick. What? I won't be seeing you again. Oh, what are you talking about? I'm sorry. Oh, no. You just can't shut a door and close me out of your life without an explanation. Please don't make me explain, Nick. Sabrina, if there's something wrong, I would like to know. All right. There was a man. He was very kind to me when I needed help. I desperately needed someone who would be kind. Must I go on? Yes. I should have realized that he was falling in love with me. But at first I didn't care. And then I found out that he was a killer. A wanted outlaw. I saw the poster myself. I traded one hell for another. So he ran away? Yes. He became insanely jealous. One night in a public restaurant, he shot a man just for talking to me. That's when I started running. Why didn't you go to the law? I was afraid he'd kill me for sure if I did that. So you've been running ever since? For almost a year now. No matter where I go, he rides in. It starts all over again. 
It would be the same here. Sabrina, we could change all that. Nick, he swore he'd kill me. And any man who touched me, I can't risk that, not with you. So that's why you wanted to make this goodbye. Well, I can take care of myself, Sabrina, of both of us. You don't know. He's a cold-blooded, savage killer. He's a professional gunman, you don't know. Well, I might if I knew his name. Jack Floyd. Jack Floyd. Yes, he has a certain fame. I didn't want you to know. Sabrina. You don't have to run anymore. Oh, Nick, you just met this girl. Now, you take this on for Sabrina, and it's just a matter of time. You walk around the corner someday, and this Floyd will be standing there with a gun in his hand. Well, now, let's see. What can I do? I uh, could buy her a ticket to uh, the Gobi Desert. Are you hard-headed? Let her go off again by herself, couldn't I? Heath, tell him what you know about this Jack Floyd. Well, I've never crossed trailers with him in person, but I know a few who did. They're mostly dead. Now, you see what we're talking about? He's a pro, Nick. Who knows how many notches he's got on his gun legitimately. <laughs> oh, now, there's no sense you two trying to cheer me up. I've already made up my mind. I suppose you try and talk some sense to him. You know what you're getting into, Nick. Trouble? No more trouble than you've gotten yourself into. After I made sure it was worth the risk. It's worth it. She's really that important to you. Trouble and all, yes. Oh, big trouble, Nick. Mother, when did you ever hear of a Barkley running away from a little fight? <laughs> Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. Why, just yesterday, old Preston challenged me to a shooting contest right in the middle of... Yes, I heard about it. You were lucky you weren't arrested. I won. <laughs> you uh, going somewhere? Uh, yes, I have a little date in town. Oh? Well, I think we'll just ride along with you. Uh-uh. I don't need any wet nursing. What are you talking about? We were going to go in anyway. This is a free country, isn't it? Uh-huh. And I plan to keep it that way. He's a big boy now, isn't he? Lynn in, please. Well, I'm sorry she's not in, but she said she'd be back presently. Oh. Well, uh, I'll wait. Well, hello. Oh. oh, Nick, you startled me. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I... Oh, I was just waiting for you. Oh, I had to send a wire to San Francisco. Oh, I see. So, what brings you to town? Well, I could say I came to town to get my horse shod, but... Uh, well, to tell you the truth, I thought maybe you'd like to see the valley by moonlight. Oh, I do have some things to take care of, Nick. Oh. Well, uh... I'll tell you what. Go and pick out a nice, gentle horse for me at the livery stable. And, uh, and we will see the valley by moonlight. When? In one hour. Ten o'clock. In one hour, I'll be there. Good. The devil. How'd he find you here? How does he always find me? He looks, he finds, he follows. I should have killed him in Willow Springs. I'll do it now. No. I know a way. I know a way to get rid of him and keep you out of it. It's got to be good. Foolproof. It is. It's your move. Jared? Hmm? It's your move. Oh. Kind of quiet without Nick around here, isn't it? Well, I can stand it. Yeah, yeah, so can I. Okay. Okay what? Okay, it's your move. But you haven't moved yet. What do you mean? I just did. You put the checker back in the same square. Oh. Well, I've had enough for tonight anyway. You going somewhere? Into town. It's funny, I've had that same idea. Let's go. Yes, it is. But I'm tired of running from you. I'm tired of hiding. I'm tired of the whole thing. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't think so. I'm tired of him. Meaning? I've stood by him all this time. I've stood between him and you. I've shielded him. I've protected him. He's going to be in town tonight. He's going to meet me at the livery stable at 10 o'clock. Ah, uh, this is a trick. A trick? Trick's been on me. Do you know what he told me tonight? After almost a year of living out of a suitcase and meeting in the shadows, do you know what he told me? He's met another woman. A cheap little dance hall floozy. The only reason he came to town tonight was to collect the money that I've been holding. 
Well, I'm all through. He's all yours. I don't believe that. I think you do. How could I have ever been afraid of you? He'll be there at 10 o'clock. Nick. Oh, you're right on time. I do have some virtues. Nick, look out. It's him. So that's Jack Floyd. Yes. Jared, would you take Sabrina over the hotel for me, please? All right. No, I'm all right. I think I'll just lie down and rest. Now, Sheriff, seems like I just shot Jack Floyd. He's still breathing. Now, some of you men help me get him to a doctor. Not you, Nick. You wait in my office. And the rest of you go about your business. Come on, Nick. Sheriff gets here, I'll be... Victoria? Well, how's Lloyd? He just died, Nick. Well, that's that. Not quite. The man you shot wasn't Jack Floyd. Of course, it was self-defense, no question about that. A couple of witnesses saw him draw his gun first. What do you mean it wasn't Floyd? His name was Pierce, John Pierce. I did a little talking before he died. It seems he'd been hunting and trailing this Floyd himself for some time for killing his brother in Arizona. He was lying. No, he had papers on him to prove what he said. Identification, news clippings. But Sabrina said... What about Sabrina? About Sabrina. It seems that this Pierce was following her, figuring she'd lead him to Floyd sooner or later, being she was his girlfriend. Oh, no, no, that can't be. Well, it fits all the facts, Nick. Now, this Pierce made a life's mission seeking revenge on Floyd. Now, I, uh, found this on the body. 
That's the real Jack Floyd. That can't be. I know how you feel. I'm not too happy about it myself. He was right under my nose. He came in on this evening's stage. The driver told me that Sabrina met him. Could happen to anybody, Nick. Let me buy you a drink, Nick. I don't want to drink. before I do anything about this, Mother. And if it's true, I'm gonna find Floyd and finish Pierce's mission no, for him. No, Look, Nick, I was no. set up for this. Don't you see that, Mother? Nick. I killed an innocent man. Let the law handle it. It was self-defense no matter who he was. And he's just as dead as if it had been murder. And you'll be just as dead from Floyd's bullet. Lynn, is she in? No, sir. Well, where is she? She checked out. Checked out? Where'd she go? Well, I don't know. She just checked out. I'm sorry. Somebody, Joe, I thought maybe she might be on the stage. Well, there was a woman, a Miss Lynn. But she and some man got off yet this side of the crossroads. Said they had some horses waiting or something. A man? What do you look like? He's tall, about your build. Kind of a good-looking fella. Crossroads, huh? Something wrong, Nick? No, Joe, I'm sorry I bothered you.
Do you really like it here? Well, I've never had a home of my own. I haven't either. Not since I was a little child. Well, I guess we ought to send Nick Barkley a thank you note. <laughs> I'll write one tomorrow. And Mr. Pierce, I think he deserves some flowers. Hmm? I think we do. I'm going to plant rose bushes everywhere, and you're going to plant alfalfa. Alfalfa? <laughs> That's all fine, but uh, what are we going to do for excitement? Hmm? We're going to stay here until people have forgotten there ever was a Jack Floyd. Well, I guess we can figure out a few things to do for a while. It's what I've always wanted. Tell me that you like it, too. It's fine, sugar. Just fine. I'll prove it, too. As soon as I finish my work. See, you found a place to hang your good fortune bells. Well, now you seem surprised. I can explain. I bet you can. Nick, listen to me. I listened to you before and believed you. It was a beautiful setup, Sabrina. A beautiful setup. All right. I love him. I'm not ashamed of it. What are you going to do? I'm going to finish a job, a mission, if you like, for a man named Pierce. He had something he wanted done, and I'm going to see that it's done. But Jack didn't kill him. You did. Jack is innocent. That's not what they say in Arizona and New Mexico. Nick. Please don't do this to me. Jack, it's Nick Barkley!
no. <laughs> Why couldn't it have been me? You're not going to be that lucky, Sabrina. You're going to live. That about settles it, Nick. Except for the reward, and it's sizable, you know. Give it to Pierce's widow. All right. I'll see to it. Well, one thing, Steve. I'd have brought him in alive if I could have. I know that, Nick. Ah, uh, go on, get out of here. Carry everything. Hats, vests, fleece line, mackinaws for the winter. Sure. <laughs> now is the time to buy a mackinaw at a good price. Where'd you get these bells? Ah, they're nice, aren't they? I had a big ship bell before, but it gave our Betty here the staggers. I got these from a house that they were auctioning up in Glen Valley. Do you want them? They've got a history, you know. They come all the way from India. Right. But, but, but that's not all. They're supposed to bring you good luck. Right again. Well, you can buy them if you like. I can see that you appreciate them. No, no, no. Let's, uh, let's let old Betty here enjoy them. Talk to you. To all of you. We've done all the talk that needs to be done. Not quite. This telegram just come from Sacramento. What's it about, Hoyt? Hmm. Huh. I'm the State Land Commission. He's sending a lawyer to talk to Libby Matthews. <laughs> talk ain't gonna save our cattle. Any grass, any water. So do mine. Then ride with us, then. We'll get it for him. We're gonna give Libby Matthews just five minutes to let us drive our herds on Stone Creek. Don't be a fool. You're not gonna scare Libby Matthews. You tried that before and she's still there. And if you try to run her off that land, there'll be a killing. That's what she wants. Maybe so. But if you get a bullet in you, what difference will it make to you or your family whether your cows have grazing water or not? 
This lawyer will be here any day now. He'll open up the Matthews land and... It ain't Matthews land, it's public land. All the more reason why we should have this lawyer handle it. Now, let's just try to be a little patient. Patient? Jed's right, Hoyt. Let's see what the lawyer can do. Hoyt? Yeah, looks like I don't have much choice in the matter. All right, we'll let this lawyer try to get the Matthews off the Stone Creek land his way. If he don't do it his way, we'll do it my way. Are you okay? Probably wasn't hurt bad as you thought. He looked real bad, Ma. His face is all bloody. I only meant to scare him. Well, it appears he did. Come on. Don't you think we'd better look around for him? We've got work to do, Danny.
didn't eat much. I wasn't hungry. Matthews. This is my mother-in-law and my son. Who are you? I don't know. What? I don't know who I am. But, but your name? I know you were awake yet. Sit down and I'll get you some coffee. I've been awake for a long time. Just lying there trying to remember something about myself. Can I get you some breakfast? No, thanks, ma'am. I'm not hungry. Well, you better drink your coffee. Danny's out trying to find your horse. My horse? He rode into our property yesterday afternoon and Danny. Danny, what? Shot at you. Well, not at you. He tried to fire past you. He only meant to scare you. Why? Them ranchers down in the valley have been trying to run us off our land. Danny thought you was one of them, coming here to make more trouble. We're sorry. We got no need to apologize. We got signs posted. You should have believed them, mister. But if I was on your property, I must have had some reason for coming here. Do you have any idea what that might have been? No, none. But, but Danny says you had a coat on when he first saw you. Maybe there'll be some identification in it. He might find it now. In the meantime, you need a fresh shirt. I'll get you one. What are you going to do? Get him one of Scott's shirts. Here, put this on. It belonged to my husband. He's away. But he'll be back soon. He'll be back real soon now. You really should eat something, you know. A little broth of nothing else. Helps you get... What are some of the towns around here? Rockville's uh, about six miles away down in the valley. Then there's Pine Woods. That's uh, about 20 miles up in the hills. Do they mean anything to you? No. Well, they're both small. If you lived in one of them, I'd know it. Well, thanks for the shirt. I'll return it to you just well, as soon. Certainly you're not thinking of going right away. Well, I can't stay here. Oh, of course you can. That is, until you're better. Well, give it a few days at least, please. Well, maybe a few days. Good. What are you thinking of? Begging him to stay. 
man is hurt. How do you know he's hurt as bad as he's letting on? You don't know him. You don't know why he come here. My guess is them ranchers sent him up here to scare us. You're wrong. How do you know? I just do. If Scott was here, you wouldn't act Well, like... he isn't here. He's been gone for two years, and he may never... You cry out. Is everything all right? Oh, I'm fine. I just had a dream. I guess you call it a nightmare. It was all about this eagle with its wings spread like it. It wasn't going to fly, but it was angry and going to fight. I... It just came closer and closer, so I. Mom? Is there anything wrong, Mom? No. Everything's all right. Go on back to bed. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, go on. Good night. Good night. He feels very badly about what happened. Yes, I know. You should wait to find out what you wanted. But he just figured you were one of those ranchers. Maybe I am. I don't think so. Why do these ranchers want to drive you off your land? It's a drought. They need water and grass, and we won't sell out. Can't you get protection from the law? <laughs> the law. The law's on their side. They say that this is public land, and the state owns it, and we're just squatters. But if the law tries to put us off, we'll fight it, too. The land must be very dear to you. There's no reason to hide it. Some people say it's a myth. But we know somewhere on this property is the Socorro Ledge. What's the Socorro Ledge? A vein of gold. My husband is a mining engineer. He spent years checking the stories about it. Now it's just a question of getting someone to back him. That's why he's east. He'll be back soon with the money. In the meantime, it's just you two women and the boy, huh? That doesn't matter. We'll win somehow. We have to. This land, the Socorro Ledge, it's Scott's life. It's my life, too. I'm going to be right here when Scott gets back. You better try to get some sleep. I'll be going into town in the morning. I wonder if I could borrow a horse. Oh, certainly. But... Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm all right now. I think it's time I start trying to find out who I am. Oh, just don't tell them you know us. They'll be a lot friendlier. Good night. Good night.
I don't know quite what to tell you. I suppose I know as much as the next man about amnesia, and I know practically nothing. Can a person recover? Of course. That is, where there's no physical damage to the brain, and none seems indicated. But it's completely unpredictable. Your memory might never return, or it might come back. Any instant. Returning just as mysteriously as it left you. But how? What would make it come back? Mm, who can say? Usually it's coming in contact with something or someone who is familiar to the victim. <laughs> Guess there's only one thing I can say with absolute certainty. Amnesia can be caused by a blow to the head. But I've never heard of it being cured by another blow. So I don't suggest that you go home and hit yourself over the head with a frying pan. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, that was a very poor joke. I should have resisted the temptation to make it. That's all right, Doc. How much do I owe you? Oh, dollar, all right. Sorry I couldn't do more for you, but what you need, there's no prescription for. Luck. <laughs> to stop by your place and see you. <clears throat> Glad to save you the ride. How about another beer? Say, uh, where's that lawyer the state was supposed to be sending down here? I haven't heard from him yet. Well, it's been three days since you got the telegram. <laughs> you better hurry up. What do you mean by that, Hoyt? Well, Cameron, that's what I was fixing to talk to you about. Uh, if the Matthews ain't off the Stone Creek land in one week from today. Now, look, Hoy, now you listen to me, Cameron. I'm losing three, four head of cattle a day. I'm going to be wiped out. So are you. So is every man in this valley if we don't quit pussyfooting around. Hoy, will you... One week, Cameron, one week. And no more time, no more talk. And then we're going to burn her out. <laughs> I wish you wouldn't start hollering the minute you come in the door. All right, where would you like me to start hollering? Did you get the mail? I thought you were taking a bath. I am. Right there on those steps? <laughs> Anything for me? Nope. Tell me something, Lord. What is it with all these baths? I mean, you take one, two, three times a day. What's it get you? Clean. Well, you had to ask. That's strange. Nothing from Jared. He said he'd write the minute he got to Rockville. Well, there's only probably one stage out of Rockville each week. Yeah. I'll get your lunch. No, no, no. We'll get it the truck wagon. I'll tell you something. He's, I'll flip you a coin to see if he's not getting those mustangs. I'm Mr. Blair from the State Land Office. Ted Blair? That's right. Oh, please come in. Thank you. I've heard Jared speak of you many times. My son's Nick. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? How do, you do? How do, you do? I hope I haven't come at an inconvenient time. Not at all. As a matter of fact, you're just in time for lunch. Well, now, that's nice of you, but I'm afraid I can't. I've got to get right back to Sacramento. Train leaves in less than an hour. I stopped by to see if Jared was here. No, he left for right for last Monday. Is something wrong? Well, I, I got this telegram this morning from a Mr. Cameron in Rockville urging me to see that Jared got to Rockville as quickly as possible. Well, he should have been there three days ago. Well, unless he planned to stop somewhere en route. No, and... no, no, he didn't. He said he was going directly to see some woman named... Um... Uh, Matthews? Yes. Well, perhaps there's no cause for alarm. On the other hand, maybe there is. I think maybe we better check into it. I'll have McCall take over for a few days, and uh, you saddle the horses, huh? Thanks. Right. May I? Oh, yes, of course.
but can I do something for you? Do you know me? No. Well, and I guess there's nothing you can do for me, Father. We. Oui. What's the trouble, my son? Do you know what amnesia is? Yes. Well, that's my trouble. A few days ago, I was knocked off my horse, and when I came to, I didn't know who I was. Oh, I see. I don't know why I came here. I, I suppose I hoped you'd know me. I'm sorry. Look, if, if you need a place to stay... No, no, Father, that's, that's not the problem. Perhaps you should talk to Dr. Driscoll. I already have. Wait. I don't feel I should let you go without doing something to help. Don't worry about it, Father. There's nothing you can do. There is one thing. You mean pray for me? Yes, if you wish me to. Well, now, I don't know. Isn't there something in the Bible about a man and his name? Yes, you mean, as his name is, so is he, from Samuel. It's strange, isn't it? A man can lose his soul, and he says, sure, Father, go ahead, pray for me. But he loses his name, and he's not so sure. You see, I don't know what kind of man I was. That doesn't matter. It does to me. That's part of what I'm looking for. Not just who I was, but what I was. My boy, you forget. Your name, everything about you is already known to him. Well, if you'll forgive me, Father, that's not much of a comfort to me. Maybe I belong here, and maybe I belong in jail. Somehow, I don't think so. But you don't know for sure, do you? And neither do I. Maybe that's why I don't want you to pray for me. Maybe I'm afraid of the answer. Well, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of ground to cover. Just one more thing, my boy. No matter how you feel right now, just remember you're not alone. And you're not forgotten. We never are. I'll try to remember that. find out anything in Rockville. Not in Rockville, not in Pine Lake. I've walked every street a dozen times. Went into every saloon, every hotel, every store. Stared at everybody I saw, and they stared back at me like I wasn't there. What'd the doctor say? <laughs> he wished me luck. You know, you very nearly didn't get your horse back. After Pine Lake, I almost kept right on going. Where? I don't know. Any place, I guess, where there are more streets to walk, more people to stare at. I, I know how you must feel, but... Oh, no, you don't. I didn't know. Not until today, and then it hit me. Just two days ago, I had a name. I belonged somewhere. I knew people. They knew me. I had a life. And you still will have. I'm sure one morning you're just going to wake up and all of a sudden you'll remember everything. In the, in the meantime... In the meantime, what? You can stay here. There's a job for you here. No money, but room and board. Look, I know you mean to be kind. No, not kind. Selfish. We need help here. You can see that. And I need to keep on going. I need to keep searching. Well, you still can. It doesn't have to be a full-time job. You can use this as sort of a base. Some place to always come back to. You need that. I need to find out who I am. I know. And I want to help you. Supper's ready in 20 minutes. Where are you going? I forgot the wear clippers. 
papers. Me and the good are going to fix the west boundary fence where it was cut last week. Dakota? That's what I call him, because that's where I saw him first. Dakota Flats? He said it was okay with him. Sure nice to have him around, isn't it, Ma? It sure is, Danny. Bye, Ma. Goodbye, Danny. How do I look? Scott bought you that dress just before he went away. Mm. I'd almost forgotten I had it. Ma! Ma, you look great! Don't you look great, Grandma? Gee, it's been so long, Ma. <laughs> Where's Dakota? Oh, he said he wasn't hungry. He's out looking for his coat. What's for dinner, Ma? Wash your hands. They're clean. Go wash your hands. You said you wasn't going to wear that dress till Scott come back. I changed my mind. Of a horse, a horse I found near the Matthews place. Yeah, look at these. Them are legal papers. That's right. Belonging to Jared Barkley, a lawyer. A lawyer the state was sending down here to get the Matthews off Stone Creek land. What do you think happened to him? You think he's dead? I don't know. Horse was roaming free, legs were scratched and cut. Saddle hadn't been off of him days. What about talking to the sheriff? <laughs> He's over in Black Butte. Besides, I'm tired of messing around. I'm going to go over to Matthews' place in Lake Quint. There's one thing I want to know right here now. You going with me? Oh, I don't know, Hoyt. I... Quint, I'm tired of arguing. Hoyt. I'll get the boys together. Libby said she was going away for a few days. Probably be back at the end of the week. Looks like it's going to be a nice night. The night I want to see is the night it rains. Maybe they got some water down the valley. Them ranchers forget about us. Danny tells me it hasn't rained in over five months. What are those ranchers doing for feed and water? I haven't asked them. No concern of mine. Why isn't it? What's that supposed to mean? Well, it just seems to me that maybe this whole problem could be solved without a fight. Like for me and Libby to give up, you mean? Let them drive their stinking cows over my son's land. Let them come. Let them in. Let them look for the gold. And if they find it, let them have it. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Whoever you are, me and Libby don't give in that easy. you weren't going. I have a feeling you won't be coming back.
something. Oh, let me see. Just a flesh wound. Let me see. Danny, get a pan of hot water and some towels. Here, Ma. Hold this up. Would be. I'm looking for a man named Batcher. Look over here. You're Batcher? That's right. I work for the Matthews. I have a little message for you. So you're the guy we ran into up there last night. <laughs> Didn't know they had a man around the place. Is that what made you feel so brave? You thought you were just attacking a couple of women and a boy? So what's the message, mister? Don't come back. Is that all? That's all. <laughs> Are you listening? Put that gun away. Put it away. That isn't going to solve anything. I'm Jet Cameron. I've heard of you, too. I was just telling your friend here that he'd better... I heard you. Well, the same thing goes for you. I wasn't a party to that raid last night. I knew nothing about it until a few minutes ago. If I had, I'd have tried to stop it. Well, you better stop the next one, because you're not running those people off that land. Maybe the Matthews ain't told you yet. Stone Creek ain't their land. They're squatters. They put in 10 years of their life up there. They're there, and they're going to stay there. I'm sorry to hear that. I'd hope we could settle this peacefully. Maybe we could have before last night. I'm going to tell you just one more time. Don't come back. The next time, I'll be waiting for you. A week. That was your promise, Hoyt. That was before I found the lawyer's horse. How about the rest of you? That Matthew's hired hand meant what he said. The next time he will be waiting. Then we don't want to disappoint him, do we? I stand to lose more than any of you. But you can count me out. What are we gonna do, Mom? Run along. What are we gonna do? Run along. Dakota's in the barn working. Shall I tell him? No. No, we'll tell him later. What's this? What are you hiding? This is that man's coat, isn't it? Isn't it? Answer me. You found out who he is, haven't you? Haven't you? Yes. But you haven't told him? No. And you weren't going to? No, and neither are you. Get out of my way. Listen to me. You can't do this. Listen to me. I need him. I can't go on like this, not any longer. I can't fight anymore, not alone, not without help. And neither can you. Look at you. Last night it was a bullet through your arm. Next time it might be one through your head. Dakota's our only chance of staying here. If he leaves, we've lost. No. Yes. I'm tired and I'm scared. And if Dakota goes, Danny and I leave. You can just stay here and be burned out or driven out if you want to. But if that man goes, I'm through. You just let them ranchers take my son's land. Yes. 
So if you want anything for Scott, you keep your mouth shut. Place. Matthew's place? What do you want with the Matthew's place? Well, not that I think it's any of your business, but we're looking for a man named Jared Barkley. Is he a friend of yours? He's our brother. Your brother? That's right. Well, I found your brother's horse up in the hills yesterday. Looked like the horse had thrown him and run off. I looked around for him, but I couldn't find him. I don't like saying this, but I think your brother's dead. Dead? Well, that's my guess. Well, not just because you found his horse doesn't mean he's dead. That's right, except we found his horse near the Matthews place. How far is it to this Matthews place? Well, it's about uh, six miles right straight down the west road. You can't miss it. But... You better be careful. Matthew, see you. They won't miss you either. What do you want? Our name is Barkley. Barkley? We're looking for our brother, Jared Barkley. Well, what makes you think he'd be here? He's a lawyer representing the State Land Commission. He's coming to see you. He disappeared, but his horse was found near here yesterday. Somebody said you might know something. Well, you were told wrong, mister. I don't know him, and I never heard of him. Put that down. Who's it belong to? The man that works for us. Mighty fancy shirt for a hired hand. Mighty fancy. Put it down. Now ride. Yes, ma'am. Ride. She's lying. I swear that looked an awful lot like Jared's shirt. be back. You got no choice now. You got to tell them the truth. No. Them to know you're hiding something. And when they come back... When they come back, we won't be here. What? I'm going in to see Jed Cameron. He'll be glad to pay us the money to get off the land. What are you talking about? What are you saying? You can't sell this land. It's mine. It's Scott's. Then where is he? Why isn't he here? 
He'll be back. When? I don't know. I'll tell you when. Never. No. Yes, he's dead. You can't say that. You mustn't. You're his wife. I'm his widow. We're waiting for a dead man to come back to find gold that doesn't exist. That's not true. It is true. I've known it all along. And why'd you stay here? Where else could I go? Where'd you go now? No, it doesn't matter. Because that man will go with you? Yes. But what if he won't? Well, he will. Just because you're in love with him don't mean he's in love with you. You have to go with us. Where else can he go? All right. Let's say he does go with you. Let's say that. What happens afterwards? If he gets his memory back? I don't know. He had a life before he came here. If you go back to it, he'll have to. You'll be left empty. No emptier than I am now. say to mother. As little as possible, just tell her we're going to be a little delayed is all. Mr. Barkley? I want to talk to you. I'm Libby Matthews' mother-in-law. Hi, Ma. Oh! Did you finish the fence? Nope. Played hooky instead. Uh, we went for a swim in the lake. Danny, would you take care of the horses? Sure, Ma. I have to talk to you inside. Would you like a cup of coffee? Sounds good. How about you? Yes, please. What's the matter? Uh, there were a couple of men here today. Not ranchers. Gunmen Hoyt Vatcher hired. They warned me that I have to get off the land right away. This afternoon. How many warnings does that make? I've lost count. But after they left, I started thinking, this isn't your fight, and it's anything should happen to you. I wouldn't worry about that. Well, I, I am worried about it. You asking me to leave? No, no, of course not. Well, what then? Well, it's kind of hard to explain. Well, don't try. Because this is my fight. I've made it mine. Why, because you believe in the Socorro ledge and that maybe you'll find it? <laughs> no. Then why? I don't know. Maybe I'm just like you. This place is all I know. All I have to hang on to. No, don't go out there. They're Vatra's men. They said they'd come back. It's a trick to make you think they know you. Jerry! Keep him busy. I'll try to get in the back. special for me in San Francisco. You gave it to him for his last birthday. Just before you left, remember? Don't you remember, Jerry?
Tell you I knew who they were. They told me. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry and ashamed. That's not much to say after you what I did. You don't have to say anything. I was tired and afraid and lonely. I needed someone. I didn't know that not until you came. But you better go. Not yet. Not until I talk to those ranchers, try and fix it up so you can stay here. No, I don't want to stay. I don't have to stay. That's what I was trying to tell you before your brothers wrote up. I wanted to go away. I wanted to go away with you. I wanted to start living again. But I still do, even though I know you won't be there. I'm not sure I know how, but I want to try. Will you promise me one thing? Don't ever stop trying. I won't. Goodbye, Libby. Howdy, Lou. Are you folks going to catch a 915? Yep. Must have lost my charm. Couldn't talk him into staying any longer. Oh, Lou, we couldn't have had a nicer time visiting you and Emma, but we do have to get back. The train's going to be a half hour late. Oh, no. Oh, oh, Brady isn't leaving until tonight. You'll be back in plenty of time. <laughs> Howdy, ma'am. Uh, what can I do for you? We come a long way, and we'd like to get a drink of water. Help yourself. Water bucket's inside. I think you can. Come on, Charlie. 
Come on, shorty. Boys want. Just get that safe open in there and won't nobody be hurt. Safe? Oh, well, well, I can't open that safe. I... Get inside there. All of you. Come on, Larry. Get. You better get that shoe fixed, young man, if you're going to be a safe robber. It just won't open. You'd better not lie to me, mister. You know what's good for you. No, no, they, they sent this new one out, and the combination just don't work. Hey, you, shorty, you go get her. Don't you get on that horse, that saddle. Hey, get off there. You heard, miss? No, I'm not. I tried to warn you about that saddle. Yeah. And I don't need any help from you. No call to act snippety. Now you've broken Duke's saddle. Sure gonna make him mad. You're gonna have to fix it before that train gets in. We got us a holdup going on. You ain't gonna mess it up. Go on. Pick it up. Go on. Go on. I tell you, mister, this combination just won't work. I'm going to count to ten. If that safe ain't open, I'm going to blow a hole right through your vest button. One, two, three. I swear to Moses, mister, they put the paper and the money from the cattle shipping in here, closed her up, and now nobody can get it open. Three, four, five. They sent all the way to St. Louis for a new set of numbers. Shut up. Six. Seven. Oh, put that thing away. You shut up and get back on If you shoot drive. him, he never can tell you the combination. But I don't know it. When I get to ten, I'm gonna blow biggest hole in you since Garberville. Now you better get that thing open. Please, mister. Please. I swear I can't open this safe. There ain't a train do, is there? Eight, huh? <laughs> there ain't a train do, is there? This guy keeps looking at his watch. No, there ain't no train due. I checked, there ain't no train due for two hours. Now, leave me alone, my accountant, said. Mm. Well, you checked wrong. The train for Stockton is overdue right now. Why do you suppose we're waiting here? I said I checked, and there ain't no train due. Better make a run for your horses. 
You, you, you just shut up and stay out of my business. What, what, what are we going to do, Duke? Yeah, Woods, you take him back there in that room and, and, and lock him up. And, uh, and the rest of you, you stay right where you are. You get back inside there. Go on. Go on. You try to signal that train or anything, they will want to shoot you, you understand? And I want you to sit over there on the bench with me. Mother, the train is... Yes, I know, dear. Do you mind if my daughter catches the train? You can keep me here. Yes, I do, man. Shorty, you take her in there and shut her up. I'm not going in that baggage room. Well, Andre, do what he says. Please, miss, you don't understand. You have take to do your what... hands off Just me. Do what he says. Now! And you! And you! Don't you try nothing, because I'd just soon shoot you look at you. Oh, no, I, I promise. You know, you really don't have to shoot anyone. I figured out how to check up on that safe combination. You don't be figuring out nothing except sit there and be quiet. If they wrote to St. Louis about the safe, there will be a copy of the letter in the files. Yeah, what will that prove? Well, it'll prove he wasn't lying. Hey, Duke, couldn't we just make a run for it? No! Get back in there and be quiet. We're staying. Now, what good will that do if you can't get the safe open? Hello, Henry. Hi. Oh, did you know your fire barrel had a hole in it? Oh, sure. Now, well, how many passengers you got? None. None? Thought you were going to have passengers. You had the flag out. Oh, that was a mistake. Uh, no passengers, none at all. Something wrong with you, Henry? No, nothing at all. We're waiting for the southbound. We won't be here till this afternoon. It's all right, we'll wait. Well, Henry, you're behind schedule already. Are you sure you're feeling all right? You ain't got the grip or something. No, I'm perfectly all right. Fine. All right. Oh, uh, better get that fire barrel fixed. The superintendent won't like it. of the letter you wrote to St. Louis. Copy? You manage your own business. Well, if you wrote a letter about the state, there ought to be a copy of it in the files. Oh, I, I never thought. But... Hey, Duke. She bit my thumb. Can't you do anything right? How come you let her out of the sack? I uh, didn't. Elwood did. Elwood! Hmm? Put her back in that sack. Oh, I did already. <laughs> I've had enough childish behavior. Hey, you. Get back in there. Get back in there, will you? You too, you get in here. Here it is, he wasn't lying. Bill of lading and payment for... Tony, come here. Can you read all that? Dear uh, sir, we have not been able to get the safe open on the numbers you sent. See, I told you. Hey, Duke, it says here $3,000. Three thousand dollars. We didn't figure but a couple hundred. <laughs> <laughs> see, I guess you want to believe me now, won't you? I told you everything's gonna work out all right. You see, I told you. You still got to get the safe open. Look, do you really want to take this money? It doesn't belong to the railroad, you know. It belongs to a lot of people. Payment for cattle shipments. Now yeah, I'm a telling you for the last time. Shut up! Get yourself over there on that bench and sit down and quit flapping your jaw every time I turn around. Now. Let's go. 
pull this thing out here and see what he looks like for it. Hell would take him out back, get every tool he's got. Crowbars, sledgehammers, augers, bracing bits, whatnot. Go on, hey. Get, get, get. All right, I'll get. <laughs> Come on, Jordy. <laughs> One, ten. I don't think you'll ever get it open. I told you, and I told you, one more word. And that's my final warning! Maybe we can bust it open underneath. Nope. One of them there hinges is the best place to hit it. Did <laughs> jar loose any? No, it's gonna take a couple more by the doggies. I, I bet you're getting it, Shorty. Hey, you sure got the paint bunged up. Hey, you got a little dent right there. <laughs> Progress. Can't you set Summers else? You're gonna get yourself hurt. Oh, I thought you were going to kill me anyhow. Shorty, go get that big hammer. We're gonna try the rock drill. I might point out that the metal in that safe is a lot harder than the metal in the drill. How'd you know that? My husband was in mining. Did he ever bust open a safe? No, of course not, but... Lady... I know. Shut up. That's right. Because you don't know nothing about it, then, do you? Hellwood, you take him and go get a rope and some block and tackle. We gonna turn her upside down. What are you doing now? Getting a sandwich and some lemonade. Oh, it's still cold. Would you like some? No, we ain't hungry. Well, there's plenty. Mrs. Johnson made more than we could possibly eat. We ain't got no time for that. Elwood, come up there on that safe and rig up that block and tackle of them rafters. Come on now, hurry up. <laughs> Doing. I'm going to get the store open. Audra, I know how you feel, but those are desperate men. There's no telling what they'll do if we cross them. I'm still going to get out of here. Ouch! What happened? I broke my fingernail. What kind of sandwiches are they, Mac? Oh, a ham, and I think there's turkey. He don't want one. I don't think it's up to you to decide whether he wants a sandwich or not. Thank you, man. We didn't have no supper last night. You sure you don't want one? All right, Elwood, you plumb down now. I'll 
get a hold, we got to hoist her up to us so we can get her high enough to tipple her over. Come on, pull, steady now. Pull, hon. Shorty, don't stand there stuffing your face. Get over here and help out. Hmm. All right, now. Three, Swing on her, I can't tip her over. Don't you think you better give up? No, I'm not giving up. And I'm not leaving here until we get this $3,000. How many grits and sour belly ain't the only thing in this world? And I want to get my share. I want you to understand that. Uh, boys? I, I, I don't want to get you mad or nothing, but uh, when that southbound pulls in here, somebody's going to notice that something's, well, not right. Elwood, get the horses. We going to leave, Duke? Shorty, if you want to leave, you get. But don't you never come back. When our daddy died, he had five cents. Five cents in an old tobacco can. And I'm going to have more than that for me and my kin. You come over here and help me out with them ropes now. Well, well now I, I don't think I ought to help you. Well, I mean, in my position, I, I'm supposed to prevent you from what you're doing, not help you. you... There, by doggies. That'll keep you out of my hair. What are we going to do, dude? Get over there and get the wagon, Shorty. Well, I'll take care of the ropes here. Just knock them in there, too. Mess them around. And more. Uh, do you mind if I ask you what you're doing now? Yes, I do mind. You go in there and bring me back two of them sandwiches. But I thought you said you weren't hungry. And how'd you like to be not clear next Tuesday and don't think I won't do her either? He sure will, ma'am. I promise you that. Well, would you mind if I let my daughter and Mr. Johnson out of the baggage room and got them something to eat? No. Oh, I promise you, Audra won't make any trouble. Well, see better than not. Audra, hello. Mother. You both all right. That's what fine. Mother, they put put that I back. I promised them you would be quiet, Audra. What are you doing? Getting them something to eat. You're feeding them? Audra, a man is less likely to kill if his stomach is full. Besides, I'm trying to get help. What good is this going to do us, dude? Team of horses can't pull no door off no safe. We're going to slide through that door, slide it across the porch, and on to the wagon. Then we're going to haul it off with us. Duke, <laughs> I sure got to hand it to you. You ain't never stumped. You figure a thing out. Well, ain't you the one to say so. Shorty, you go in there and pry up on that safe on them rappers. <laughs> Turkey. Would you like some watermelon pickles? No. I wouldn't want to get knocked into next Tuesday. Woman, you just better stay clean out of my way. I don't think that door is going to be wide enough for the safe to get through. I'm not going to help you steal that money. You help me with this, I'll hit you with this rock drill. You think I like doing this? Do get some of the damn blasted notions a man ever just get. There. 
so I seen him cattle in New Mexico, and every one of them skinny critters had hoof and mouth disease. Dug six months for gold. All we got was $14. $14. Tony, when I holler, give her all you got. Got you, dog. I'm sorry, but it's not going to fit through that door. Ha! <laughs> Outside, all right. <laughs> but uh, how are you going to get her in the wagon? You got any dynamite? Dynamite? What would I be doing with dynamite? Train, she meant. It's got to be. The next one's not to leave. Conductor, did you make a stop at Bixby Flats? Yeah, sure did. Did you pick up any passengers there? Nope. There wasn't anyone there at all? A woman and her daughter? A lady waiting for the southbound. Man with her, no daughter. Ah, oh, must have missed a train and changed her mind. Nice looking lady, sort of well dressed? Yep. They're waiting for the southbound. Was there a young girl with her a blonde? Nope, just an ornery looking man wearing buckskin pants. The lady had silver hair, wore it up yep. kind of like. Oh, my boy! That was a Bigsby Flats? Yep. Bigsby Flats. Telegrapher. I'd like to send a telegraph to Bigsby Flats, station agent. Bigsby Flats? Ah, uh, station hasn't answered anything for, oh, the last two hours. Now the line's down? Couldn't be. The next station south is getting through all right. We had some funny signals there for a while, but now, nothing. Well, would you try it again? All right. Won't do any good. Shack we camped, that is our only chance. There's dynamite there and ain't nobody around to look on us. But do we need to take them along? There ain't gonna be nobody here shooting at us, Elwood, as long as they're sitting in the wagon. Robbery is five years in prison and kidnapping is 50. I, I, I just thought I'd mention it. When I want to... What makes you think you can get away with this? You know, somebody's bound to get... Shorty, go inside and bring me back a mail sack. Oh, I, I don't think that will be necessary. Shorty, bring back two. Two. There's one thing I can't stand. It's a Gabby D. Woman. Go get on, Lulu! Doggy, is that all to do her? She'll glide along like a feather in a lake. Can the law be following us, Elwood? Oh, like fleas to a dog, shorty. What's it, Pa, you say about a bear fight? Oh, there ain't no way to quit once you start. Just keep clawing till one or the other of you is chewed up. <laughs> that's us, and that's safe. I see you, you shorty, you're running off at the mouth. Come on! You'll be home by tomorrow, sure. Tomorrow happens to be too late. 
Something special going on. Very special. Boyfriend, I suppose. Well, you can see him the next day. He'll be gone by then. I'm sorry. Well, if you're so sorry, then why don't you let us go? Sorry you shut up that talking and watch back there and see if we're tail. Well, I thought you might have something special going on, like an uncle was going to die or something. Or she's going to get married or something. Brady Mosier passed the examinations for West Point. The whole town's giving him a send-off. I was going to join the army once. Both cavalry. Pays $13 a month. He'll be an officer. What are you doing? You're making it tighter. Well, if you hold still a minute, maybe I could get something done. What'd they say? Help coming? No. They're just telling me I'm fired if I don't answer and tend to business. Come on. Shorty, give me some rocks, and I want you to make a pile right over there. Sure do. What are you doing? Just shut up. I want to leave a note. Can you write? Of course you can. Don't get smart, lady. There ain't no of course to it. Yes, I can. And I want you to write what I tell you on this piece of paper. You write. Uh, stop here. We'll be turned loose when the money is got out of the safe. How do you spell got? Shut up and write. They'll kill us, but we ain't hurt now. And you sign both your names to that. Elwood, come over here. They're going to follow us for sure. You take this here rifle and get up there on them rocks. This note don't work, you shoot, and you shoot good. That's real good, Shorty. Right there in the middle of the trail, they'll have to stumble over. Duke, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure, go ahead. No, I... I mean, sort of private. You ain't getting no notions, are you, Shorty? This ain't no notion, Duke. I want to ask you something. Well? About where to put this. Duke. We ain't going to... You wouldn't shoot them women, would you? and said we better not follow. We better not plan on doing any wild shooting either. He's a railroad detective, and it's their money. All right, railroad detective, let's go. Very well, gentlemen. They sure made a mess. Some people never can do nothing neat. Thank you. 
Shack right over there, shorty. Mr. Duke. What? Would you please untie us? No. We're nothing to be afraid of. And I promise you we won't run away. Well. All right. You start getting Gabby, you understand? You keep an eye on him, shorty, none time. I'm gonna get that dynamite. nothing to do with this, only Duke wanted to... Well, you don't need to explain to me. I guess anyone has the right to be a thief and a murderer if, if they want to be. I, I ain't a thief and murderer. Oh. I suppose you're just borrowing that safe over there. Well, I ain't murdered anybody. Don't tell me. You'd shoot us in cold blood just as soon as look at us. All in the name of heavenly carnation, we wanted to get out of that safe was four or five hundred dollars. So we could get us out of this country and buy us a little ranch. No harm done. These are the caps, the ones that blow up. I know that. Mr. Duke, I don't want to tell you your business. Don't call me, mister. All right, Duke. But if you dry these caps, they'll blow up. That sets off the dynamite. That's the whole idea. How you know that? Oh, believe me, take my word for it. Now, if you take some of these caps and attach them... To... I just bet you that you want to go in partnerships with us, don't you, and get no. some of our money? No, no, I'm just trying to get home without being blown up. Yeah, I'll bet you that. The pretty woman ain't out bigger than me. Shorty. After I untie that safe, I want you to take this team over there to the shack and take that Gabby woman with you. You untie on that rope there. Honey, you shot it. Quit lollygag that woman and haul off that wagon. Got you, Duke. Get along, man. Give me them caps. Oh, Duke, this is nonsense. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to blow us Three thousand dollars ain't no nonsense. No, it's money, but it's only money. Only money. Well, I guess you wasn't ever poor, was oh, you? Oh, yes, I was, Duke. Yes, I was. But I know what you're doing here doesn't make any sense. Yeah, well, me and El Wood and Shorty go down to Mexico and get us a ranch. And that'll be it. We're going to get us a horse ranch, and we ain't going to worry no more about nothing. You're like someone who believes in Santa Claus. Life just doesn't work out that way, Duke. Uh, oh, for heaven's sake, you're going to blow us all up. Come on, now, wait. Put this back. Come on, gently, gently. Now, give me a length of fuse. Duke got that leg shot up in the war. Been ornery ever since. I never thought I'd live to see the day my mother was blowing up a safe. Now, you bring the rest of the dynamite. You knew all about dynamite. 
dynamite. There weren't enough there. You know it all, Gabby Warren. Let us go, hmm? You know, kidnapping is a lot more serious. I said shut up and get out of here and leave me alone. Right now. Shorty, robbing people isn't the only way a man can make something of himself, is it? Look, I didn't rob you, so what you hauling about? The railroad don't matter. It's got all the money anyhow. But what about what happens to you? Does that matter? I get along all right. Well, you, what happens if you're caught and sent to prison? Well, what's that to you? I don't make any difference to you. Shorty, people make themselves what they are. If a man has clean clothes and a job and, and learns to act decent, well, then he's as good as anybody else. How didn't I act decent? Well, it's threatening to shoot women decent. Look, nobody's going to shoot you. And if anybody did, I mean, if anybody looked at you that way, I'd... You could become whatever you wanted to be. You could get a job, get married, and have a family. Nobody would ever want to marry me. I think they would. What if this don't blow her open, Duke? Don't you start on me, boy. There ain't no whips about it. I'm going to get that money out of that safe. If it's the last mortal thing I do. Them ladies are sure fine people, Duke. What's that got to do with it? Nothing. I just thought I'd say it. Well, you said it. Oh, they're going to use an awful lot of dynamite. We'd better get behind the shack. You'd better let me do that, Duke. That's a short fuse. We're going to have to run. I can run. Don't be a hardhead. Ain't easy. safe. Money has got out of the safe. She wouldn't say it like that. They told her what to write. Let's try her out. I'll tell you, there's a lot of money in that safe. $3,000. I'd give them $3,000 right now if they turn Mother and Order loose. What, and let those men get away with robbery? Besides, there's $20,000 in that safe. The station agent said $3,000. Well, I'm telling you $20,000. That was a special shipment, railroad business. They must have a lookout posted somewhere in those rocks. I think I'll take a walk up there. Maybe they might talk if I take off my gun. Yeah, I'll go with you. You can keep the money! Turn the women loose!
Where did that shot come from? Somewhere up there. You're not gonna let that stop you, are you? That's right. Nobody else is going busting up there shooting either. Money in that safe ain't the reason we're here, mister. That's only paper. Paper? That's railroad money. Speak for what's your own. I am. Somewhere up there is our mother and our sister. You've been in that thing for an hour now. You got any better ideas? Duke, it's not too late to change your mind. Get on your horses and ride out. You'd like that, wouldn't you? There are thousands of possible combinations. Now, you'll be here a month. And I don't think Elwood can hold off those men that long. Duke, you ain't never gonna get that thing open. Why don't we do what she says? Shut up! Look, I'll go get Elwood. We can get out of here. Shut up! I'm a gonna get that money out of that shirt safe if I have to die trying, and I don't mind telling you I wouldn't mind killing somebody along with it. I ain't been nothing, I ain't nothing, but I ain't gonna be nothing no more. You, Shorty, come here. Go ahead, shoot me, Duke. I don't care. You need the combination. Now send Audra down for it. You can keep me here. You'd love to get her out of here, wouldn't you? That's right. But she'll bring back the combination, and then you set us free. Mother, I'm not going to go and leave you here alone. You'll do what the Duke says. Good. And now get rid of you, you flaxen-haired old mouth woman. I'm plumb wore out of tying you up. And you can tell them down there that I'm going to shoot your maw if they don't do what I say. Or do you tell them I'm all right, but they have to help us get the safe open. Tell them if they don't, that the Duke is just mean enough to... Well, you convince them. Don't need no convincing. Old Duke is not really mean. He's just stubborn. And if you used that stubbornness in the right direction, you'd be the richest man in three counties. Audra, get going. And you tell him down there you better come back by yourself. You dead burn, took a morn, you dead nip. Where are you going? It's Audra. Audra! Audra! Is Mother all right? And they won't hurt her if you can get them the combination of the safe so they can get the money. We'll get it. Don't worry you, about you it. You mean the safe hasn't been opened? The money's still in there? And they promised to let her go if I bring back the combination. If you bring it back, oh, no, no, no. We're going to bring it back. Oh, no, Nick, I have to. That's what they said. Well, I'm not authorized to give the combination to anyone. You mean you got the combination with you? Well, well I have no authorization to give it to you or anyone else. Hand it over. But I can't do that. You see, I have no authorization. But you, you, you can't do that. You'll be helping to get away with the money. One turn left to 17, back one turn to 24, three turns left to six. But you'll be as guilty as they are. And you'll be guilty of murder, mister, if those women don't come back. All right, we got to let's go. No, they said me. And I don't want anything to go wrong. All right. I'll be back in a little while. Are you getting ready to go to church or something? Nope. I just hate to let myself get run down in my appearance. There ain't nothing wrong with the way you look. For a saddle bum. Not for decent people. Like girls or somebody like that. Shorty, it doesn't matter how a man looks. It's what he is. People look at me like I was dirt. Always have. You know, Shorty, Deep down, I think you're a very decent person. You're just...
you're just saying that because you want to get away. But I know different. Duke won't let us go. Sure, I didn't want a piece of cake. Yeah. How about you, Duke? Want a piece of cake? No! Well, it's chocolate. I don't care what... Now, Duke, I know how to use this. Yes, ma'am. I just bet you you do. Shorty, pick up that shotgun, Shorty. And, ma'am, if you turn around, I'll get you. If you don't, Shorty will. Shorty, get on your horse and ride out. The whole thing isn't worth it. Shorty, pick up that shotgun, Shorty. Duke, there ain't no sense going on with this. Shorty, you better do what I tell you. I ain't gonna shoot no woman. Well, what do you want her to do, shoot me? Let me go, that's all I ask. Then you can do anything you want. Please, Duke. Shorty, if they come up here looking for her and she ain't around, they're going to gun us down. Mother! I'm all right, dear. I'm all right. We ain't the kind of people that does that. Or wants it. Any of it. And if you do, you ain't my brother. Is your combination. They didn't get it open today. No, and here's your combination. Oh, thank you. thing on the wagon. We'll take it back to the station. I'll get it open if I have to use dynamite. <laughs> 